You guys voted, so here it is! Hello everyone, I'm Emma, and welcome to the Stardew Valley Expanded Mega Movie. We'll be taking the journey through the entire 423 days on this save, from zero to perfection. You'll be seeing the progression in my Stardew Valley ability, well, kind of, but also how much better I get at making these videos. Before I begin, I must stress that I'm fully aware of how fast I talk, particularly for the first 100 days, but please bear with me, I was very much still learning. You'll see how much better this gets over time. This movie is probably perfect for those like me who like to have something on in the background when they're working or studying, etc. But also, I've got the chapters and the playlist of individual videos linked in the description. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. I played 100 Days of Stardew Valley Expanded. Stardew Valley Expanded is an amazing mega mod that gives a huge map expansion, new quests, loads of new NPCs, and more. It's great if you've been playing loads of the vanilla game and want to switch it up a bit, but me? I'm a noob. So obviously adding loads of new stuff is a little bit ambitious. I've got a small save on my Nintendo Switch, but I haven't really played it in years, so I hope you're ready to facepalm. I recorded the gameplay for this video whilst I was sick, since I knew I could voice it over later when I felt better. And then I had to move, so this video has kind of taken me over a month to put together and many many hours. So, uh, subscribe! <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. But it would mean a lot to me. And with that, I hope you enjoy the video. So for these 100 days, I had three main goals. My first was to complete the community center. But, spoiler alert, I couldn't do this because I later found out I forgot to tick that box when I created the save. So we've already failed. Number two, upgrade at least one tool to Iridium. And number three, get pigs. Because pigs mean truffles, and truffles will make us rich. These may seem like modest goals to some, but I must remind you, I'm a mega noob. So um, let's see how I did. <laughs> On day one, I grabbed my parsnips and started clearing my farm. I planted one and went to PS to sell the rest, but it was closed, so I decided to go meet some other people. Plus the dog, Dusty is cute. It was finally 9am, so I introduced myself to Pierre because he's the one I usually forget. Then I sold my parsnips so I could buy one of each seed and fill the rest on potatoes. Because I saw a Reddit in a guide somewhere or something. I ran back excited to plant my first ever seeds, and immediately realised how much I don't like watering. God, I can't wait for sprinklers. I chopped down enough wood to make a chest because I'm a loot goblin and I used the rest of the day to explore the map, speak to NPCs, and of course forage. I already came out for them spring onions, but there were literally only two. After selling my spare forageables, I ended the day on a measly 160 gold. <laughs> on day two, I went down to the beach to collect my fishing rod from Willy, but by now we've all seen this cutscene a million times, so I skipped it. I caught my first fish, which was a sunfish, and then met as many people as I could, before calling it a day at 22 out of 31, and going back to my farm to clear more land, mainly weeds to try and get some mixed seeds, because freebies! <laughs> When I ran out of energy, I went to bed to get level 1 foraging. Yay, build snacks! Day 3 was my first rainy day, so I took advantage of the extra energy by clearing more land. But also I could chop some trees to get the seeds for the all-important field snacks. I immediately ate my first one after crafting it, by which point it was only 10am, so I decided to go foraging, and look for the rest of the people to meet, but somehow got distracted by fishing for some reason. I was quickly met by small backpack problems though. I thought I could be smart by attaching my bait to my rod, and this drove me bonkers when I was trying to work it out. And then I found out you can't do that with a bamboo pole. So I ran home to deposit my stuff and called it a day there, reaching level 1 fishing. Day 4. Today was the day I would finish finding everyone. I was determined. And I had help from the NPC map locations mod, I literally couldn't do it without it. Jody was the final person I met after spending ages getting her, Leah and Penny confused. I finally met everyone I could, so to celebrate, I gave Jody a clam. She seemed pretty pleased with it, so I'll take that as a win. On day 5, my single parsnip was ready, so I went and put it in a chest for the community centre. I went to check the quests on the board, and Clint was asking for some copper for inspection, so I thought today would be a good day to start mining. After putting some extra stuff in the chest, I got the community centre cutscene, which I skipped, so I could run up to the mines where I was met with another cutscene, which I also skipped. I made it to floor 5 that day, leaving with 18 copper ore, which I took straight to Clint for inspection and gratefully accepted my payment. Then I made my first donation to the museum from what I found in the mine, and grabbed the gold for that too. Hey, level 1 mining! On day 6, I received the crafting recipe for the furnace so I could start smelting that copper. I was sent mails from Marlon who wanted me to kill 10 slime and the wizard who asked me to visit him. After watering my crops, I ran straight down to see the wizard, where I, you guessed it, skipped the cutscene. <laughs> Having opened up the community center, I grabbed my forageables and lugged them up to the community center, completing my first bundle. I decided to spend the rest of the day in the mines fighting slimes. I'm really bad at combat, like legit, what is that? Oh my goodness. Got there in the end though, didn't we? I exited on floor 10 with some new boots, which I walked straight on over to the adventurer's guild to upgrade my sword to a wooden one. I ended my day by making a furnace so I could start smelting copper and rate in a whopping 70 gold for that single parsnip. On day 7 my potatoes, kale and tulip were ready. Oh, and I realised I hadn't planted those seeds from yesterday so I did that. I then checked the quest board and Clint was asking to look at more copper ore so back to the mines I go. I only made it to floor 15 that day because I'm a noob and I'm slow, while going to show Clint the shinies I found. I forgot to sort a present for Lewis's birthday so I gave him some freshly mined quartz, which he hated. So I went home and cried myself to sleep. At least I levelled up in farming though, and I actually made a bit of gold. 
Day 8 was a bad luck day, but I'm stubborn and completely ignore this and headed up to the mines again anyway, so I was determined to make some actual progress in there. That's not to say I didn't have moments of regret. Those buzzy bugs are the most annoying things. Leave me alone! Not gonna lie, I started to flap a bit on floor 18 so I panic left, and then went for some retail therapy by purchasing myself a new backpack. The loot goblin needs those slots. Battered and bruised, I went home to plant my single rice shoot on dry land because I am a dingus. Then I used the rest of the day to relax and fish. Thankfully, we leveled up our combat, making those wounds a bit more worth it. On day 9, I had to make up for yesterday's terrible mining day, so it was yet another day in the mines. I didn't even bother to check my luck. I don't know if I was having a bad time finding the ladders or if I just suck, but I ended up running out of time and energy, and then getting a swarm on 24, so I just kind of had to leave. Yikes. Even so, I managed to pass out on my farm at 2am, but I leveled up my mining, so we gooed. On day 10, Clint mocked my lack of mining progress by asking for a gold bar. I wanted to give him a piece of my mind, but I bit my tongue because I really needed those geos open so I could donate more stuff to the museum. I spent the next day and a half mining, only to reach floor 30 with level 3 combat. Day 12 is dog day! I named it Mia after my real life dog. Because it was a Friday, I went to check the travelling merchant and I bought my first ever rare seed. I got a cutscene with Sophia which I actually didn't skip, and she very kindly gave me a quality sprinkler and let me know I could order them from her at any time. I instantly forgot this fact. I realised I hadn't done nearly enough fishing so I went to the pier for the day and made a bit more community centre progress. Even though fishing isn't my favourite thing, I managed to level it up, as well as foraging, so I'd call that a small success. Day 13 is the day of the egg hunt, and I didn't win because I forgot how to pick up this egg and then left it behind and then there was this egg that was taunting me and I couldn't figure out how to get to it. Sophia won instead but I was fine with that because of the sprinkler she gave me, bless her. I went home after the festival and planted the 10 strawberries I bought that day, and then it's on to day 14 when I learned to cook coleslaw. And oh my god, does anyone else do this? I keep picking the TV up instead of watching it. Oh and look, it's a bad luck day, but loads of crops already, so that's a win in my eyes. Especially since now I could complete the spring crop bundle in the community centre. I decided to listen to the luck today and not go mining, so I chopped trees to get the 300 wood to repair that beach bridge. Remembering it was Sunday, I went to check the travelling merchant. I don't know why I bothered with 19 gold, so I walked away empty handed and repaired that bridge so I could have another spot for pocket change. I spotted this bubble spot, so I tried to spend the rest of the day fishing, but I quickly ran out of energy, so I went home. I actually made a bit of money today. Nice. Day 15 marked the start of salmon berry season, which meant I needed to get to work foraging so I can save up loads of berries. I didn't though. I went instead to get the cutscene in the Adventurers Guild, which I didn't skip, and became the 23rd member. I also upgraded my sword whilst I was here. For the rest of the day, I headed into the mine with the goal of reaching floor 40, and I actually did it. But also look at all that iron, oh my god. In fact, I actually made it to floor 45 today, and leveled up with mining and foraging skills. I'm really proud of myself for that. On day 16, I sent my pickaxe for an upgrade and donated a bunch of stuff to the museum for loads of rewards, which was nice. And then I chopped wood for the rest of the day so I can get some tappers going, as well as more chests because I was accumulating things. On day 17, I went to collect my pickaxe, but obviously it wasn't ready yet, so I went and fished for long enough to get money to buy the fiberglass rod, which I immediately took for a test drive before remembering I hate fishing, and left. Just kidding, I went cave fishing and got mostly trash, but a couple of these weird looking stonefish. And with all that, we ended the day on fishing level 3. I started a rainy day 18 by rummaging through the bins and got my first trash bread on the way to Clint's to pick up my pickaxe. I didn't care that today was a bad luck day, I had a shiny new pickaxe and I had to use it which meant the rest of the day was a mining day. I made it another 5 floors to 50. Rubbish. And when I got back to my farm, I was getting impatient with that tree tapper having produced a grand total of nothing. So I gave it a smack and put it back because I thought I did something wrong there. Turns out I just needed to wait. Patience, Emma. Patience. On day 19, Jodie asked me for a cauliflower, but she's going to have to wait because they're not ready yet. I went to Robins to get a silo built thinking I was being smart so I could pre-get loads of hay for the animals, but uh, I couldn't find these little arrows to change the building because I am a dingus and I gave up. I even looked through the shop a bit, like literally what am I doing? I thought it was that I unlocked them after the coot so I decided to go home and take my frustration out on these rocks and logs. Kinda overdid it though and got exhausted. Oops. The crop fairy came though, I think she felt sorry for me or something. On day 20 the coro- I can't even talk. On day 20 the coro- <laughs> On day 20, the cauliflowers were ready, so I ran a fresh one straight down to Jodie, although I kind of feel like we ripped her off a bit for 350 gold. I crafted my first ever crab pot and placed it down at the beach, not knowing that I could have just done that on my farm. Oh, and I also didn't know to put bait in it yet. But anyway, we leveled up farming, so that makes up for it. On day 21, I got this new cutscene with Leah, which I for once decided to watch and not skip. Although I still clicked through the dialogue at lightning speed. I got this green bee, which I apparently ate, but after the cutscene it was still on my backpack. Like, how? Having now saved up the materials, I went to Robbins to ask her to build the coop, and then I went to Clint's to ask him to upgrade my axe, not realising I'm too poor for that. So in frustration, I gave my regurgitated green bean to Sophia. Day 22 was a long mining day. I got down another 10 floors to 60, before realising how late it was and decided to just stay there until I passed out at 2am. Because I levelled up in mining and combat, I woke up on day 23 with full energy, but I was billed 135 gold. On day 23, I managed to accumulate enough hardwood from the mines to complete the construction bundle, and then I got my first piece of iridium ore from an ungeared. I then went and spent the rest of my money on potatoes from Pierre's. This was a grave mistake. 
it's so hard to have to rewatch me doing this. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at past me or happy watering the potatoes. She has no idea. <laughs> Blissfully unaware, I went on to the Inventors Guild to claim my first reward. Honestly though, what the heck is that thing? I sold it straight away. I'm not carrying that around. I made it another five floors in the mice today, but I passed out down there for the second night in a row. <laughs> on day 24, I woke up with a note from Linus who found me last night, so no doctor's bill for me. I harvested my first strawberries and then completed the adventurer's bundle in exchange for a small magnet ring. I completely forgot today was the day of the flower dance and it took me way too long to figure out how to get to it. I wandered around this little section for ages honestly, but I got there in the end, only to be rejected by literally everyone. Maybe next year. Leveled up my farming though. On day 25, more strawberries are ready, and I received a mail with 500 gold from my dad and spent the rest of this day mining for more iron. I left on floor 78 because I was determined not to pass out here yet again. On day 26, I bought my first two chickens which I named Bussy and Nilad. Okay, the game name then because I suck at naming stuff. I then went to the merchant to buy another rare seed and then up to Robins to finally get that silo built. I returned to my crab pot to see it was empty and that's when I realised I needed to use bait, so I bought some from Willy and loaded it up. This was a good day for beach forageables and I managed to sell a fair amount, ending the day with an extra 2,240 gold. On day 27 I decided it was time to upgrade my axe with Clint and then decided to check on my crab pot at the beach to find my bait only attracted trash. Lovely. So I spent the rest of this day in the mines. On day 28 I bought another rare seed and checked my crab pot again and actually got a crab which meant I can complete another community centre bundle. I feel like the fact they give you more crab pots is a little bit of a slap in the face really though. I also completed the blacksmith bundle in exchange for another furnace and realised I only needed one fire quartz to finish the boiler room so I made that my mission, finding that on an infested floor 86 of the mines. On my way back though I put in the aquamarine and completely forgot about the fire quartz. What a dingus. Not my preferred way to MO first spring but at least we made a little bit of gold. On day 29, the first day of summer, I realised the massive mistake I made, clearing a field of what was mostly dead potatoes. Oops. On my way to Pierre's, I got the geologist bundle done, which meant I could unlock the minecarts because walking was long. By this point, Pierre's was open, so I went and bought one of every seed and then spent the remaining gold on more melons and blueberries, which I planted on my farm. Since it was now broke, I planned to spend the rest of the day fishing, but I just kept getting trash, so I went foraging instead. On day 30, I suddenly remembered I actually had chickens, so I went and took care of them and collected my new copper axe from Clint. I used the minecarts for the first time as a shortcut to the mines to see if I could progress a few more floors. I left on floor 90. On my way back through town, Clint was asking for more copper again. I think he's obsessed, so I accepted the quest. I then sold my spare weapons to Marlon and went to bed after failing so hard at fishing. I reached level 5 combat though, and I chose the fighter path. On day 31, there was apparently an explosion overnight. When I went to check what that meant, I was greeted at my door by a new NPC called Susan. Turns out the explosion opened up the path to her farm, so she can come to town again. I had a mail from Lewis asking me to retrieve his underwear. Gross. So I went to Marnie's and quickly realised I wasn't good enough friends with her yet, so I tried to give her this lovely gold bar, but she hated it, the ungrateful b****. At this point, I was determined to reach floor 120 of the mines as soon as possible, but on floor 95 I suddenly remembered Clint's copper quest, so I tried to use the rest of the day gathering that. I also spoke to the dwarf for the first time, but I couldn't understand him, so I left and completed the summer forage community centre bundle. On day 32, Demetrius came to set up my cave, which of course, I'm team fruit bats. This was yet another mining day because I still didn't have the copper off of Clint, so I sorted that real quick and accidentally gifted it to him. I was shocked to see he hated it though, and then realised the quest had already expired. RIP. On day 33, I didn't do a huge amount. I went on a foraging tour, then bought a puff of fish and a coffee bean for the travelling merchant, which I immediately went home and planted, along with 10 more wheat for the community centre. On day 34, I gave Marnie a cauliflower on my quest to get Lewis's shorts back, and spent the rest of the day fishing with Willy. I kinda overdid it though and got exhausted, which meant I woke up on day 35 with half energy. Oops. Nonetheless, I still dedicated to the day to getting as far into the mines as possible, using a staircase to reach floor 100 and get my first star drop. That gave me the energy to keep going a little bit longer, so I exited the mines for the day on floor 107. Day 36 was a pure fishing day, and on day 37 I harvested my wheat, then I went to get a grass starter because I realised the chickens were still eating the hay even though I was letting them out every day. I gave Granny Evelyn a frozen tear for a quest, and then planted an apple sapling in prep for the fodder bundle. But when I went to shut the chickens in for the day, I realised they already ate all the grass. Yikes. On day 38, the wild seeds were ready, so I picked them, and then I crafted and placed my first preserving bins. Then I started clearing this little section in prep for a barn later, and managed another 5 floors in the mines, making it to 110. Look at these amazing space boots! I started day 39 by grabbing fruit from my cave, having somehow walked past all the melons which were also ready, so I went back for them, and then I marched myself down to the luau, where I added to the soup a random spice berry I just found on the ground. I didn't even wash it, but the government has seemed to like it, so I'll take that as a win. That single spice berry was enough to take me to level 5 foraging, so I picked the forester profession because I really didn't know any better, but also I wanted more wood. Day 40 was the day of my first blueberry harvest, and Susan kindly mailed me some more free melon seeds which I planted. 
I went and bought the first vault bundle in the community centre, and then with some of the rest of the money, I bought 16 melazines so I could work towards the quality crops. Oh, and I got more corn seeds for this too, making sure I used some fertiliser when I planted them. On day 41, I managed to complete the summer crop bundle, which gave me another quality sprinkler, which I desperately needed, and then spent the rest of the day grinding for oil so I can craft more regular sprinkles. Sprinkles? Sprinklers. <laughs> On day 42, Palm asked me for some pale ale, but I can't make kegs yet, so she's gonna have to wait. I did first think I could buy it from the saloon, so I went straight when it opened, only to find Gus was clearly late, so I paced anxiously until he arrived, only to be met with disappointment. So I left an open geode so I could add more to the museum and collect my next reward, which was pumpkin seeds. When I went to bed, I was blocked with my dog, which made me panic a little bit, but with some quick thinking, I just moved my bed, which I felt was a 200 IQ move to be honest. On day 43, I was determined to actually make it to the bottom of the mines, not even bothering to check my luck, and I actually did it. I know, I know, it took me way too long, but we did it, okay? On day 44, I bought some radish seeds, and then I went back to the mines since I can't seem to stay away from there, and I did need some iron. On day 45, I finally had enough gold to start the barn construction, so I went to Robin to get that done, and then I spent the rest of the day at the beach foraging and fishing, but I just couldn't figure out how to hit this bubble spot. It was lucky I went fishing because Victor was asking for a flounder, but what we're not going to talk about is how embarrassingly long it took me to locate him on the map despite the quest icon. Day 46 was a rainy fishing day, and on day 47 I bought a coconut from the travelling cart, then realised I hadn't explored this bottom corner of the map yet, so off I went into this forest where I found a few forageables and this abandoned farm. I couldn't find anything to do here so I left. After a bit more exploring, I found this little area with some random low level weapons, and then I realised with my poor sense of direction I should probably find my way home so I don't pass out here, and I'm glad I did because it took me till 11pm to get there. On day 48 I woke up to a mail from the mayor containing 500 gold for being the best neighbour, and one from Demetrius asking for one of my melons. I didn't have any ready yet though, so I went and explored some of the east side of the map because I hadn't been there yet either, but I didn't find anything interesting, so I went back and opened up some geodes at Clint's. With the coconut I bought yesterday, I completed the exotic foraging bundle, which gave me some food, disappointing, and also bought the 5000 gold bundle, which gave me quality fertiliser, better. On day 49, I cleared the bottom path of my farm as it was starting to get clogged on my way to the travelling cart, where I bought a puffer fish and some honey with intentions to donate them to a community centre without realising I already donated a puffer fish, but at least I could drop off the honey. I also finally managed to return Lewis's shorts for a whole 750 gold. I'll take it. The rest of the day was spent fishing, which got me to level 5, and I chose the fisher profession. On day 15, my melons are ready, so I went to give Demetrius the goods. Then I went to Marnie's to buy some cows, but it's a Monday, so she wasn't there. I went back home and realised I had not even touched the side of my farm, so I cleared the land to investigate because I didn't know until this point that this was where the greenhouse is. There were another two paths to explore, but my axe wasn't good enough for that, so I couldn't go there. Time for bed, I guess. We're halfway now. On day 51, one of the chickens was mad at me for some reason, and didn't give me an egg. I also accidentally ate the other egg. Oops. I tried again to get the cows from Marnie, even checking the map to see that she was there, only to be met with disappointment once again. I rummaged for some trash bread from Jody's bin, which I immediately gifted to her son. He had no idea. Then checked the town board to see Clint needing help with his copper ore obsession, so I headed to the mines to handle that for some easy extra gold. On day 52, I was greeted with a big harvest, and I could finally buy my cows from Marnie. I named them Nonna and Brello. Then I spent the rest of the day fishing, which meant I can complete the ocean fish bundle. When I went to sleep, I saw I leveled up my farming, which meant quality sprinklers finally. Even made a decent amount of gold too. Now you know the first thing I did on day 53 was craft as many quality sprinklers as I could, so I made 15 of those. After harvesting my crops, I went to check my mail and found a note from George asking for a hot pepper to rub on his knee. Luckily I just picked some of that, so I brought it straight over to him. Even then he complained about how long it took me. Rude. The rest of this day was spent mining because Clint was, once again, asking for more copper ore. I really think this is becoming a problem. Maybe I'm enabling him. I had a few geodes to open on day 54, with some stuff I could donate to the community centre for three new rewards. I also purchased the 10,000 gold bundle for my first lightning rod. I spent day 55 at the beach fishing and clearing more of my farm, and on day 56 I grabbed my final harvest of the summer season, and spent the day in the mines until I was reminded about the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. I rushed straight down to the beach so that I didn't miss it. It was pretty, but I don't think I'm going to go next year because there really wasn't anything to do. Day 57, the first day of fall. Time to redo the field for the next crops. But the corn made it really hard to plant it properly and I didn't want to remove them, so the struggle is real. We made it work though. It was already midday when I placed all the quality sprinklers, so I thought I should run over to Pierre's for seeds, picking up this help request from the wizard on the way. Having planned ahead a little, I managed to come away from Pierre's with a decent amount of seeds, I feel, but this meant I worked into the night getting all planted. I ended up only doing the pumpkins because I realised I had to water them all for today as well, so I ended up finishing these off on day 58. I also got this cutscene for the community board, which I didn't actually skip, and then I went to the mines to kill the squid kid for the wizard for a bit more easy gold. I noticed for the first time that he had a basement, so I went to check it out where I was met with this cutscene. It's pretty cool down here, but I wasn't sure if I should touch anything, so I left. On day 59 I walked past some corn that was ready for the second day in a row, but I did manage to complete the full foraging bundle, so I went back to the farm to plant my reward seeds. The afternoon was spent making more chests and reorganising because I was hoarding so much stuff. I also realised I'd goofed because I forgot to plant my rare seeds. 
On day 60, I woke up to a crow munching on my corn. How rude. So I repositioned my scarecrows. Hopefully that won't happen again. I finally picked that corn that's been there for days too. I decided that today was the time to upgrade my axe so I can visit the secret woods and explore those two parts on my farm, and then picked up my first ever community board quest because I forgot about them until now. I fished at the beach to try and get this done quickly, but I didn't catch a single albacore. I focused on completing a couple more fishing bundles, finishing the river bundle and the night bundle. On day 61, I bought a lucky lunch for the travelling cart, and then I remembered I had that fruit gave, so I picked up all the goodies before heading up to the mines to catch the ghost fish, which I literally got first time. I used the rest of the afternoon grinding for iron ore to make bombs and prep for skull caverns. On day 62, I picked my bok choy and collected my shiny new axe from Clint. I managed to donate a couple more things to the museum from Geodes, but all I got was this ugly vase. There was a request from Marnie on the help board, so I promptly took care of that. And since I was out this way, I decided it was finally time to go to the secret woods. So I shot that log and made my way in. When I got there, I saw this top path which I didn't recognise, so I didn't explore and found out this was a shortcut to my farm. I didn't want to go home yet, so I fished in the water in the woods for the wood skip, but I also caught this wall basket. On day 63, Marnie was at my door asking for a cave carrot for our goats. Luckily, there was one for sale at the travelling cart because I was far too lazy to get one from the mines. I ticked that off my list super quick. Look how excited she is. I wanted to make some more money, so I invested in some more cranberries and put my old sprinklers back down for more crop space. On day 64, Linus asked me to retrieve his blackberry basket. This reminded me that it was now blackberry season, so off I went collecting them berries. I went and grabbed Linus's basket too, but when I returned to give it to him, he was asleep. With all that running around, I decided to go take a dip in the bathhouse. But you know me, I'm fidgety. I don't sit still very long. So I was only in there for a second before I left again to explore the area above the train station, where I found another graveyard. On day 65, my first cranberries were ready, and so was my amaranth, which meant I can give some to Marnie for her quest as soon as she was ready this morning. I also went and hunted down Linus to give him back his basket too. When I got home, I realised I had a cherry just chilling in a chest, so I can now complete the artisan bundle for my first keg. And now I can finally start on that pale ale for Pam. I had a bunch of wild seeds ready on day 66. This was a very foraging focus day because I really wanted to rack up them blackberries. On day 67, the first pale ale was ready, much to Pam's delight. Look at this ale connoisseur. And then I spent the rest of the day mining for mainly stone because I wanted to be able to make loads of staircases for skull caverns. On day 68, I got my first cup of coffee and tried to offer a few things to that weird statue in the secret woods before googling it and realising I needed the sweet gem berries from those seeds I forgot to plant. So that's a rip. As I was passing, I checked the travelling car and bought this really expensive crocus for the chance of completing the winter foraging bundle earlier, but at this point I was still missing the snow yam. So I was in the mines the rest of day 68 and the entirety of day 69 trying to hoe one out of the ground. I was unsuccessful. On day 70, I was back in the mines again, but this time just grinding for some stone, and I finally got to level 8 farming, so now I can make my own kegs. On day 71, I found out I finished the big cranberry order. I'll take the extra gold, thank you. And I got this mini shipping bin in the mail from Lewis, which I stored straight in the chest because I didn't know where to put it yet. I promptly forgot about it. At this point, I finally had enough gold to purchase that 25 gram bundle, which meant I now finished the vault room. I went home to place my first crystallarium and popped a diamond in it, before heading over to Clint's to spend the remaining gold on upgrading my pickaxe, and a buttload of yams from Pierre's. Overnight, the bus had been repaired, but day 72 was the Stardew Valley Fair Day, so I went to check it out. I put some random things in the display, hoping for a decent score, and then I played some of the games the fair had to offer, with the goal of 2,000 tokens for that star drop. I quickly found out that the fishing game was giving me the most success, so I did that till I saved up those 2,000 tokens. Turns out I got second place for my display. It'll do. So I fished again so I could buy that rare crew. Overall, a pretty successful first fair, I think. Day 73 was a bad luck day. I collected my pickaxe and went over to the desert for the first time, having a little browse of the trader. I used this time to grab all of the forageables for the first time, and soon realised just how big this desert was. It literally goes on forever. Given that it was a bad luck day, I decided against going into Skull Caverns and just fished for the sandfish instead. Just kidding, since when am I sensible? It didn't take me long to find out how much stronger the enemies are down here though, so I took my escape on floor 6, so that I could safely bring my sandfish to the community centre, completing the speciality fish bundle. I hit level 8 combat too, so all the scares were worth it. On day 74, I received a mail from Mr. Key challenging me to reach floor 25 of the Skull Caverns. It was, once again, a bad luck day though, so I went to visit Robin instead and asked her to upgrade my coop. I did also take a trip to the regular mines because I had a quest to gather 100 bone fragments, so at least I could work on that. But by the end of this day, I only gathered 28. On day 75, I forgot about that bone fragment quest and went back to the desert. I made it my mission today to get to floor 25, and even got my first treasure floor, picking up the slime egg. To be honest, I really struggled through it, but we made it. We got there. I was disappointed though because there was no reward in my journal, it literally just disappeared. Luckily it was in my mail on day 76. 10 grand! Some of which I spent on two new ducks, one named Latu and the other named Jenabella. From there, I went to open some troves and geodes, and when I went to donate the stuff to the museum, I got intrigued by this floating question mark, not realising it was for that bone fragment quest, and proceeded to get mad at Lewis for being in the way of me checking it out. I eventually gave up on that and headed to Robin's to ask her to upgrade my barn, and then I spent the evening in the regular mines trying to work on that bone fragment quest, and a new one from the wizard to kill two squid kids, but I did momentarily get distracted by a reward that was ready with guilt, so I went and collected my skull mask and went back into the mines again. 
I ended up losing track of time, passing out right on my doorstep, and then ended up spending day 77 in the mines again, determined to finish this quest. I then suddenly remembered I had loads of bone frags and a chest at home, so I excitedly ran these to the box in the library, and then realised that's not how it works. All I could do now was go back to the mines and hope I kill enough skeletons to complete the quest, because it was the final day. I was cutting it close, but I finally finished close to midnight. The relief. Having now completed that quest, I learnt the recipe for the bone mill on day 78. And now that my barn was ready, I also went and bought two goats from Marnie. The game named them Jeppo and Sna. I didn't really like Sna though, so I re-rolled and went with Wombus. It was time to accept a new community board quest, so I ended up doing the one for 100 bug meat for Willy. Wanting some last minute crop money, I went to Pierre's and bought loads of bok choy seeds, which I immediately planted and then went back to the mines to start on that bug meat. I didn't want to leave it to the last day again, so I focused on this for day 79 and day 80, which is when I managed to grab that reward. On day 81, I literally just chopped wood, and on day 82, my bok choy had grown, so I harvested them. I also found a duck feather at the travelling cart for the community centre, and finally fully upgraded my backpack, which meant lots more room for activities for my next Skull Cavern run, which I decided to do immediately. I almost died on floor 31 though, so I ran. I honestly suck at combat still. I foraged to make myself feel better and it was worth it because I made it to level 8 foraging which meant I could now make my own farm totems which is the first thing I did on day 83. It was good luck day today so I went to Skull Caverns again, still definitely not prepared enough but I didn't really know that at the time, and I was rudely interrupted by the Spirit Sea Festival so I had to rush back so I didn't miss it. It took me a while but I managed to get to the end of the maze and bag that golden pumpkin. Day 84 was another good luck day, but it was also the last day of fall, so I went and scythed as much grass as I could to fill my silo for winter, before heading to Skull Caverns for the day, trying to get more money and iridium, but I kinda ended up dying instead. Look at all this stuff I lost, my sword, my blackberries! Ugh, time to go cry myself to sleep. I got to level 9 mining though, and still made some gold. On day 85, the first day of winter, I realised I had the winter grass mod, so I panic scythed all that grass for nothing. I got this cutscene with this guy which utterly confused me, so I ignored it and went to Clint's to upgrade my pickaxe, and accepted this fishing quest. I ended up deciding that maybe I should go find that shadowy figure in case it was important, and remembered something about one of those in the sewers, but it was still locked, so I tried the beach where I was met with this overdue cutscene from that bug meat. Gross. That made me forget what I was doing, so I bought myself an iridium rod and then grabbed some bait and a quality bobber to put on it. I then remembered I lost my sword so I popped up to the adventurer's guild to get a new one. On my way out I found this bubble spot so it's fishing time. As you can tell my attention was all over the place today. I did catch a midnight carp though so that was cool. On day 86 Gunther was at my door thanking me for donating so many things to the museum. I checked my mail where I got the wood chipper recipe, my blackberries that I recovered from the other day, and a challenge from Willy to catch a squid. So I made today a pure fishing day since I also had the other quest. Just kidding, I remembered I still don't have that snow yam so I went and hoed the ground by robins. And lo and behold, snow yam! I completed two bundles that day, the lake fishing bundle and the winter foraging bundle, which also meant I completed the aquarium and the crafts room. Well happy with that! The rest of the day was actually spent fishing this time, I promise, because I really did want to get those quests done. And I did it. Oh, and I got a Nautilus shell from the beach, so that's another bundle done. On day 87, I woke up with a mail from Gunther with that reward. It was 40 grand! What? Oh, and the farm computer recipe from Demetrius, but that's whatever in comparison. I planted my winter seeds and fetched my pickaxe from Clint's before heading up north where I was given the copper pan on my way to the quarry. I wanted to check out this other cave which looked kinda scary, but I braved it anyway to find this weird statue and it gave me a golden scythe. I then took my leave to clear the valuables from the quarry. I then remembered about that little shadowy guy so I ended up googling how to find him, which meant now I have the magnifying glass. A pretty eventful day overall. On day 88 I went to start the house upgrade and then sent my home for an upgrade too. I realised at this point how much I neglected my friendships, so I went around talking to everyone, and then I went to the saloon to buy all the recipes for that day, because I was excited about my future kitchen. On day 89 I upgraded my sword to the lava katana, and on day 90 I got my first large goat milk. After collecting my hoe, I waited outside Emily's door like a creep with some amethyst from Clint. She loved it, but I don't think I was supposed to take the credit. Oh well. Anyway, I took my goat milk up to the community centre, completing the animal bundle and therefore the pantry. At this point, I only had the bulletin board left, and I still didn't know that won't be possible to complete by day 100. Day 91 was new house day! Look at all this room for activities! The travelling merchant had a rabbit's foot that day, so I grabbed one for the community centre and then made it down to floor 38 at the Skull Caverns, and here are all the goodies we picked up for the day. Not amazing, really. I started day 92 by moving my bed to the door because I almost passed out again last night. Emily was at my door telling me about her sewing machine, and then Robin knocked on my door to tell me about an old shed that was on my farm that we can restore. I completely missed this little pop-up about the Festival of Ice, so it was another day at Skull Caverns for me. I got my first prehistoric floor, but I only came out with three iridium ore. There was a note in my backpack though telling me to go to floor 100, I don't know how I'm going to pull that off. On day 93 I opened some artifact troves and donated stuff to the museum. It occurred to me that I only had one dwarf scroll left so I headed to the mice to try to get that last scroll. In fact I spent day 94 there too, but still no scroll. Day 95 was the day I finally realised I missed the festival of ice. I decided to spend some time trying to solve the secret notes. I don't know how I struggled so hard with this one- wait what the heck is Lewis doing? Uh. Yeah, anyway, I just couldn't figure it out, and it's infuriating to watch this back. I did get there in the end though. 
On day 96, the wizard asked me for some void essence, so after tending to my animals, I brought one right to him in exchange for a thousand gold and pure rudeness. I realised that we were just a few days from the end, and I still hadn't got any iridium tools, so I ran my pickaxe to Clint so I could meet that goal. Even without my pickaxe, I went to the mines anyway because I still didn't have that last dwarf scroll, and I had to kill 50 bats for a quest. I still didn't get the scroll, but I got a note asking me to bring some maple syrup to the secret woods, so I did. And nothing happened. So I went to bed and tried again on day 97, and we did it. We gained the best special knowledge. With that distraction out of the way, I set off the deluxe barn upgrade, and then decided to spend this day on adding something decorative to my farm and laid some paths. But annoyingly, without my pickaxe, I couldn't unhoe these spots, so by the time I went to bed it was a bit of a holy mess. On day 98, my pickaxe was ready, so we actually met a goal. I had to give it a test drive, so I immediately went to Skull Caverns, even though it was pretty late in the day for that, but I came out with a few diamonds, so I was happy. On day 99, I decided to start off by finishing my paths. But if you want a really handy decorating pro tip, is to not put bombs next to your paths in your hotbar or this happens. You dingus. Why do I always do these things to myself? Why? That literally took me all day, so it was night market time, where I bought a few houseplants as well as this painting. I tried to do that secret note for the mermaid show, but I couldn't figure it out. I failed. Well, no, actually, I thought I did it because I didn't know you're supposed to get a pearl at the end, and I thought it was just for this cutscene. So yeah, that happened. I spent the rest of the night fishing in the submarine for the special fish, but I didn't catch very much before I had to go to bed, so overall this day was kind of a massive fail. On day 100, I wanted to start off by placing my new houseplants, but this one turned into a snowman, which utterly confused me. And when I placed the other two, they turned into something else too, and I was like, what is going on? This is not what I paid for. Being my last day, I saw that my deluxe barn was complete, so I went to Manny's to buy my pig, but I was too poor. So I went to fish desperately at this bubble spot to try and make up the gold, and we made it. I went back to the night market one final time for another chance at the blobfish, not realising I just spent all my gold so that's a massive rip. I can't believe that's the note we end our 100 days on. I went to sleep for the final time and made 1800 gold. So how do we do? Well here's where we are with the shipping, not bad. And here are the fish that we caught, pretty good. We got like half the artefacts and gems, did terribly with cooking. And as for achievements, I'm pretty happy with our progress so far, we got quite a few done. Now with friendships, um, yeah, that's something we need to work on. And what about those main goals? So number one, we failed right from the get-go because it literally wasn't possible. I can't believe I forgot to tick that box. I don't know what I was thinking. Number two, we actually did because I got my pickups upgraded to Iridium. And number three, we also did on the very last day when we got our first pig. So yeah, I know those are modest goals, but we actually got both of the possible ones done. So I'm pretty pleased overall. So I played 200 days of Stardew Valley Expanded. If you haven't seen my first 100 days, I highly recommend you check that out before watching this one. This video has come out a little bit longer than our first one because I had a helpful comment letting me know that I can speak a little bit fast, so I'm trying to slow down a little, and also really due to the sheer amount of things there were to do. This time, we had four goals. I wanted to find all the golden walnuts. This means we actually have to complete the community centre this time, and make it to Ginger Island. Number two was to marry Victor, because I needed to put some more time into increasing our friendships in general, but also because he seems nice. Number three, buy an obelisk, because who wants to walk? Just one though, because I must remind you, I am a noob. And number four, get a full set of Iridium tools. I managed one tool in the last video, so let's try and complete the set. So with that, let's jump back in. On day 101, I started by checking my journal because I couldn't for the life of me remember what I was doing. I gave some solar essence to the wizard for his birthday, which meant I got this new cutscene that I didn't actually skip. I didn't really know what was going on, but I think that was kind of the point. I chopped trees in the forest till I completed Robin's resource rush. Then it was time for us to start getting Victor to like me. Thankfully, he likes crocuses. Maybe I'm allergic to him though because I just suddenly... Just kidding, I was sick again. I then decided to check my community centre progress to discover that it wasn't just the red cabbage I was waiting for. I also needed a pomegranate and a truffle. Ugh. This day was the last day of the night market. By this point, I actually figured out the mermaid show and then went to the submarine so I could catch the blobfish that we failed to get last time. On day 102, I got an invitation to learn some magic with the wizard. I also found out that my secret friend was Sam. For some reason, it took me three attempts to get this maple syrup, but we're going to pretend that didn't happen and go and buy a pomegranate sapling to plant in the greenhouse. From there, I ran to the wizard's tower because I was really excited to learn some magic, and he made me a drink with something weird again, which, uh... I wasn't sure what we were doing at first, but then I saw that I can now change my appearance. CBA to do that right now though. I also finally set up my greenhouse for the first time because I honestly forgot I had it. I was also getting sick of having to get hay for the chickens during the other seasons so I removed the walls so that they could become more free range. I started day 103 by visiting the secret woods for hardwood where I hit level 9 foraging. Since it was a good luck day, I headed off to the desert to attempt skull caverns, completely forgetting to eat my spicy oil for a good while. 
Yep, still a dingus. This was a good day. I hit level 10 mining and got my first prismatic shard. And a red cabbage seed. I got down to floor 49 before passing out at 2am, which for me at this point was not too bad. But I was gutted to miss that diamond. At least I'm a gemologist now though. On day 104 I planted my red cabbage seed and reached level 10 farming which I was super excited about and I of course had to share this with Victor. And what says success better than chocolate cake? And since it's her birthday Evelyn gets some too. I still didn't get what this swan statue is about. Oh wait that's a pelican! <laughs> oh my god duh. <laughs> okay anyway. <laughs> In the afternoon, I went to the Adventurers Guild and collected a vampire ring and sold my spare weapons before heading into the mines for coal. When I went to sleep for the day, I chose the artisan profession. After browsing the travelling car on day 105, I sped off to the desert as we were blessed with yet another good luck day. With my first prismatic shard, I went down to get the galaxy sword. Yeah! This time, I actually remembered my spicy eel, and even though I got a fair amount of gems this day, I only came out of 25 iridium ore, which is really what I came in here for. At least we hit level 10 combat though, and I chose the brute profession, small and mighty and all that. The next day, I went to pick a special request to do, so we went with the rock rejuvenation. Marnie was also asking for a ruby, so I guess I'll take care of that too. I then went to Robins to ask her to upgrade my coot to the deluxe one, and when I went to forage by the train station, Clint asked me to gather materials for explosives, so our to-do list was growing again. Luckily, I already had everything we needed for all three tasks, so I proceeded to chase Emily through town with the gems that she wanted, and then headed to find Marnie to give her a ruby. My final stop was Clint's with the stuff for his explosives, and I feel like we got a decent amount of gold for that. On day 107, I got my own sewing machine in the mail. I immediately went to place it in my house when I was alerted to an explosion at the railroad. I put down my sewing machine and ran up there to investigate. It looks like Clint's opened up the summit. I've never been here before. And also, look at all the forage and artifacts. As I got a new artifact, I decided to gather my geodes to take to Clint's on day 108. I don't know if I was distracted here or something whilst I was trying to run to the minecart. Where am I going? Anyway, we opened a fair amount of geodes and donated them for a few rewards. I also made a start on the mysterious key quest and dropped a rainbow shell at the train station which meant the next step was getting some beets. I couldn't do that yet though, so I did some skull caverns for the afternoon, and I'm pretty happy with the goodies we brought home the next morning. As you can see, I got a couple of dinosaur eggs, so I started day 109 by putting one in the incubator. It was also the Feast of the Winter Star today, but apparently I'm allergic to festivities too. Once that was over, I gave Sam his cranberry wine which he seemed to like, and Shane was actually my gift giver, and he got me a jade. Being half Asian, I loved this gift because jade is a symbol of many good things. On day 110, Gus was asking for an albacore. Funnily enough, there was one at the travelling cart, so I snapped that up. And then I headed to Marnie's to get another pig which I named Gummy, and a couple of rabbits, one named Grabu and the other named Jonah. As I passed the help board, I saw that Victor was asking for an earth crystal, and obviously will help him out if it'll earn his love. After giving Clint an emerald for his birthday, I dropped by the saloon to give Gus his albacore, almost accidentally eating it. Gross. And then went to Victor's house, where I got this cutscene about his books. I mean, I'm not personally much of a reader, but I'll happily listen. And with that, here's your earth crystal, Victor. Look, he called it perfect! On day 111, I went foraging at the beach, and foraged some more in the secret woods. I then decided I might try to be efficient, so I spent the rest of the day hoeing all the tiles in my field in prep for spring, which was just around the corner. On day 112, I made more quality sprinklers, and then I had to go back and re hoe the tiles that decayed overnight. My final afternoon of the year was chill. I fished up at the lake while smelting some gold. Gold takes ages though, so it was pointless me bringing the furnaces really because I only got one round of ingots in. On my way home, I wanted to try and do that secret note about the thing behind the community centre, but I had no luck. I ended the last day of my first year by levelling up fishing and made myself 7,000 gold. On day 113, Kent was at my door, but that didn't matter to me because I then saw all the hoeing we did was a complete waste of time. Ugh. Well, here we go again. It was nice to be able to let the animals back out though. As I walked into town for the first time this year, I had this cutscene about a new community garden, which I guess came with a new update. It's cool to have another space to be able to use, but I think it'll be a while before I can make the most of it. Now it's time to get our seeds. I grabbed a few garlic because they were new, and, well, garlic is life, and then grabbed 96 cauliflower seeds. We ran home and got to wet planting, and it was at this point I was regretting not upgrading my watering can over winter, because now I had to water all of these one by one. With all that hard work, we slept well that night, and woke up on day 114 with our red cabbage finally being ready. Having just picked up a truffle from the pigs, this meant that the last thing left for the community centre was now the pomegranate. I went to drop off what I did have though, and was super excited about the seed maker. I randomly remembered about that secret note from the Joja truck guy, so I went to say hello and he asked me for a rabbit's foot, so I gave him one in exchange for a special charm which permanently increased my luck. Super happy about that. 
On my way home, I grabbed a new quest from the special request board. We're gonna get some leaks for George. We put that on the back burner though, and went to Skullgavens on day 115, despite it only being a neutral luck day. I feel like it still went pretty well though, and even got our first treasure floor where we got some life elixir. And we made it all the way down to 100. This floor was pretty creepy, and Mr. Key asked us to drink his special milk. Why is it purple? It was honestly gross, but we had our health increased. We ended up passing out on floor 101, but all in all, still a successful day. On day 116, I wasted a farm totem. That's not milk. I then went to Clint's to get more geodes and troves opened, donating all the new stuff to the museum, including one of my prismatic shards since we now had a few. And luckily, I got a few more farm totems as one of the rewards. Kent asked me for a dandelion on the help board, so I went to meet him at the summit to give it to him, along with some wine for his birthday. I then did a bit of night foraging in the forest to try and get those leeks for George, but I only found a couple before I ran out of time. On day 117, I was hunting for leeks again when I got this new cutscene with Victor, so I guess we're making progress. This pretty much made me forget what I was doing, so I went to that old community garden and started clearing it. I got about two thirds of the way done before my attention span said no more, and I left. Instead, I went and found this bit of gold and went home to find a worthy spot for him, which got me in the decorating mood. So I went and finally finished off my paths before realising my garlic has been ready all day and I haven't picked it yet. And then I just turned in for an early night. On day 118, I crafted the ore machine and then set off my first bottle and went into town to get my hoe upgraded. I needed to occupy myself whilst waiting for my hoe, so I checked the request board and it was just Clint, once again, asking for copper ore. I decided, not this time Clint, I am done. Instead, I headed out to that massive forest to try and get some more leeks. But also to go fishing there because I heard from Willy that I could catch the king salmon there, so I wanted to give that a go. And we actually did it. This gold quality one is worth 1031 gold, so I hung around for the evening to try and catch some more. But to be honest, at the end of the day I was slightly disappointed at the amount of gold we got from fishing. On day 119, I went to hunt down some more leeks because we were closing in on that deadline. When I checked my forage chest, I found out I now had enough to give out for the quest, so I gathered them and dropped them off at Evelyn's kitchen. I'll take two grand for a few leeks. As I came out of the house, Lewis was walking past, which was perfect timing for his birthday gift. And from there, I headed up to the mountains for a spot of fishing. I woke up on day 120 with a coffee machine in the mail, and if anyone knows anything about me, it's how much I love coffee. So that was going straight in my kitchen. And I could finally collect my new steel hoe. I then spent the rest of the day in the mines, but in all honesty, I cannot for the life of me remember why I was here. Was I here for iron? Was it to smack some dust sprites? I don't know. I left around midnight going home to craft myself an iridium band. Day 121 was a good luck day, so I gathered a few supplies of Skull Caverns. You'd think by now I got better at combat, but I... yeah, it's still bad. Somehow, I made it down to floor 61 where I passed out without dying and got a good quantity of stuff. So on day 122, I started by selling some of our riches. A little dino had hatched today, and we named it Grillo. I mean, look how cute! It was time to pick up another special request, so I went with a new one from Susan to make 50 quality fertilizer, which meant we had some fish to catch. I went back home to get my fishing rod, but then I decided to make some paths to all the things behind my house because obviously that's a perfect use of my time right now. I mean, I suppose it is good because we do walk a little bit faster on paths. And then I also won't have to worry about trees and stuff getting in my way. We did leave it unfinished though. Oh my god, does that not look so annoying? At least we made a decent amount of money today though. On day 123, I added a bit more to the path, leaving it unfinished in a different spot. And then popped down to Marnie's to get a couple more pigs who are named Z and, uh, Ketcho. Sure. I stopped putting off the fishing and spent the afternoon at Shearwater Bridge, catching mostly an absolute butt ton of shad and then did some night fishing up at the mountain lake where I caught a bunch of frogs. Why am I holding the poor thing like that? I don't know why I care. I am, after all, about to shove it in my backpack. Which, can we take a minute to think about how gross this backpack would be in real life? Imagine receiving a daffodil as a gift, but it stinks of fish. <gasps> anyway, on day 124, I woke up to a load of batteries which I was super excited about. I shared my excitement with Victor by giving him a rabbit's foot, which he loved, and then headed down to the beach to catch some more fertilizer. And by the end of the day, I managed to craft 30. Day 125 was egg hunt day, so I grabbed no, I, I grabbed my coffee and then headed outside to notice that most of my cauliflowers were ready, so we now had a bunch of harvesting to do before we were off to the festival. Um, Pam? You're going the wrong way! First thing I did there was buy 100, oh, nope, 200 strawberries, and then it was time for the egg hunt. This year, I was gonna beat Sophia. I could feel it. I wasn't gonna miss that egg from last time, except, hold on a minute, the eggs have changed places. What? I thought I was screwed, so I just did my best, getting annoyingly close to catching an 8th egg when time ran out. I don't even know if I beat Sophia because Abigail won. The disappointment smelt like rotten eggs, so I went home for the night to start planting my strawberries. 
On day 126, I went to check the travelling merchant who had a pack of beet seeds, so I grabbed those to whack in my greenhouse for Mr. Key's quest, and then headed to Marnie's to finally pick up auto grabbers because milking the cows every day was getting so annoying. For Haley's birthday, I gave her a piece of cheese because it matches her hair, and Haley probably likes stuff that matches, right? Oh, and also, I finally managed to pick up a pomegranate, so guess what? <laughs> We finally completed the community centre. It's done. We freaking did it. I couldn't believe it. After all this time. Now so much more of the game was about to open up to us, and I was filled with optimism and excitement. So we celebrated by giving Victor some cheese, and catching our last few fish for the fertiliser request. To use every possible minute of this day, I decided to add to my paths, but I didn't realise till I made them that I made 100 of the wrong ones. I sold them because I didn't want to look at them anymore, and then I went to bed. On day 127, I woke up with a mail asking for yet another leak for George, but annoyingly, I didn't have one. When I went out to hunt for one, I got this new cutscene with Marlon. He took me to the sewer so I could finally get in there for the first time to meet Krovis. This would explain my confusion in the last episode where I couldn't figure out how to get into the sewer because in the expanded version, you needed to have completed the community centre first. I love this deviation. This cutscene was really super cute and is actually one of my favourites. I realise now that it was salmon berry season. I wanted to focus on foraging as many berries as I could, and whilst on my berry rounds I dealt with loads of quests. I dropped off Susan's fertiliser for 4000 gold, then went to give Evelyn the leak, also coming out with a recipe for cookies. From there, I picked up a new special request to kill 50 dust spirits, which I always thought they were called dust sprites but whatever, and then went to the sewers to grab that dark talisman, but also picked up a void egg and the star drop from Krobus. All in all, an extremely productive day ruined by my dog blocking me and passing out right next to my bed. On day 128, I got loads of cooking recipes in the mail. Susan taught me how to make some more expensive alcohol, and then I got rid of that barrier thing at the railway cave, armed with some void mail for the henchman, so I could retrieve the magic ink, which I gave straight back to the wizard. When I left his tower, I received what felt like my 847th cutscene with poor little Jazz getting lost in the woods. So we returned her safely to Marnie. We picked some more berries on the way to the beach, but we were met with another damn cutscene. But this one's okay because it was the four heart one with Victor, and that was followed by another one with a lot of yelling from Andy. All that socialising was getting exhausting, so I dropped off the materials for the boat in Willie's store, and then escaped the rest of the humans by heading into the mines to squish some dust sprites for the evening. On day 129, I was really hyped for going to Ginger Island for the first time ever. Yes, ever. So I gathered up my tools and hopped right on that boat. And let me tell you, the amount of excitement, I could barely contain myself. Before I followed Leo into the jungle, I noticed these tortoises, which I tried to move out of the way, but they were far too sleepy. So into the forest I went, where I picked up my first golden walnut and gave it to the parrot in the treehouse. When I left, I followed the flame to the north, trying to get whatever walnuts I got on the way, and then headed into the volcano for the first time, where I was warned that this place was gonna be lethal. I explored for a little while to see what was here but left on level 3 because I was worried about finding my way out with my terrible sense of direction. This walnut also drove me nuts, because I couldn't figure out how to get to it, so I left it alone for now and went home with a total of 6 golden walnuts. On day 130, I started by giving Pam a truffle oil for her birthday, and then got back on the boat for Ginger Island. This day was dedicated to getting as many golden walnuts as I could to unlock the western region and the farm, starting with trying to get this one again because I am a dingus. The definition of insanity. Doing something over and over again and expecting different results. Look at the disappointment, I can feel it through the screen. I found out you could get some in the volcano, so that was my next stop, but my loot goblin ways were hindering me because I kept running out of backpack space. Day 131 was my first strawberry harvest of the year. Then on my way to the beach I accidentally gifted my mango sapling to Kent. I only wanted to talk to you dude, why did you have to take my stuff? You're not even grateful. At 13 golden walnuts I now had enough to unlock the west, where I found this lady who needed help getting back a keepsake. For now, I continued on my quest for walnuts, picking up another 10, with an extra one I found in the jungly bit. I was on my way back to the volcano when I saw I could repair this bridge, so I rescued Professor Snail and grabbed a few more walnuts. On day 132, I got some cookies in the mail from Evelyn, which I immediately went and sold. I then made a couple of beach totems, because walking there every day was really becoming a pain. When I got to Ginger Island, I checked out Professor Snail's tent, before heading back into the volcano because I was determined to reach the end today and I made it there just barely alive, getting the chance to meet Lance for the first time. What really caught my attention though was this chest because that is the way of the loot goblin, and inside was a prismatic shard. The next day, I was greeted at my door by the wizard who asked me to lend some warp magic at his tower, and then a wild Lance appeared who gave me his schedule, except I wasn't quite sure why, and then Lewis came by to tell me about community day tomorrow. That was a lot of information all at once, so I just harvested my strawberries and then shoved Lance's schedule in a chest where I promptly forgot about its existence. 
Since I was in town today, I decided to start the quest for the old lady, so I headed to give the wall photo to Kent, who gave me some tomato salt. I suddenly realised I still had like 50 dust spirits to kill, so I dropped that other quest for now and headed to the mines to squish some little fuzzies. As you can see, I'm still no better at combat. We managed to finally finish it though at half past midnight. On day 134, I hatched my first void chick, settling on the name Gash. This badass chick deserves all the pets. It was community day, so I headed up to the community centre to check it out. It was cool to see a bit of life in this place, sure, but there was nothing I could find to actually do, so I left. This felt like a bit of a waste of time, really. With the new week, I went to pick up a new special request where Pam was asking for the strong stuff. So I headed right to Piers for potato seeds, but he had the day off for community day. How dare! Instead, I went to Ginger Island to try and get some more walnuts, and found this little secret cave where I spent the evening attempting the puzzle. It took me a few attempts, but I did it. We now had our 20, so I rushed to get the house fixed and made it to bed just in time. The first half of day 135 was prepping my brand new island farm, and then I figured out how to kill this little wormy dude. Wait, he has legs? That ain't no worm, what is that? <laughs> I then went to check out the cave next to my house and found a new froggy friend who was asking for the pink thing. The juicy thing. This man's after me melons! What the f***? Yeah, I think I want to go home. The next day was the flower dance, and I managed to get Victor to dance with me. This was the first time literally ever anyone said yes to me. I do however look so out of place. I'm literally just doing squats and I'm sitting here cringing. On day 137 I spent ages hoeing in the mines to get the final dwarf scroll and we finally got it so now we can complete the set. When I got home I slapped down some speed growth for fans potatoes, not realising I've made the same mistake as last time. Don't at me. <laughs> on day 138 I checked in on my greenhouse, expanding my ancient crop fruit. I got round to donating that final dwarf scroll so now we could speak their language, and I went straight to the mines to see what was up. We bought the weathered floor recipe and a rare crow, and then headed to the desert to meet Sandy for the first time. Yes, the first time. After acquiring more beet seeds, we gave her the rose in exchange for a TV remote, which we ran straight to George who gave us an arctic shard, which I bought to the wizards but first he fed us something weird? For the arctic shard, I was given a worm, which we handed to Willy and he gave us the pirate locket which worked out really well because I was planning to go to Ginger Island on day 139 to return to the old lady. She gave us the recipe for fairy dust, and some more golden walnuts. Now that we could finally speak dwarf, I returned to the volcano to see the shop there, buying the two recipes they had. On day 140, I forgot to record, so that brings us into summer. On day 141, I cleared my field of dead strawberries and potatoes. Wait, why didn't I just use my greenhouse? Or Ginger Island? Oh my god. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. I went into town to buy blueberry seeds, and then toddled off home to plant them before heading back off to Ginger Island to enchant our pickaxe for the first time. We got the efficient enchantment. On day 142, our taro was ready, and I hunted for some more golden walnuts so that on day 143, I could free the island trader. And oh my god, aren't they adorable? It was becoming apparent that I'd need a good quantity of dragon's teeth, so the day was spent in the volcano trying to get some, which is also what I tried to do on day 144, but I didn't find any. I did however get these cool dragon scale boots. On day 145 I harvested my beets, then I wanted to upgrade my axe, but Clint wasn't there? I headed to Lewis's to put the beets in the fridge, and then added some more paths by my chest to make it easier to get around. On day 146 I gathered enough eggs for Gus's famous omelette, but my dumbass has been putting them in the mayo machine, so I didn't actually have enough. Clint was back in the store so I could now upgrade my axe, and then gave Demetrius my spare puffer fish for his quest. I headed to the mines for the evening as I needed to kill two lava crabs, and found this amazing mushroom floor, which greatly helped with the foraging level. No luck on the crabs though. The following day I went foraging at the desert, and then gave the sand dragon its last meal. When I got home I placed more paths because I was sick of these trees growing in my way. But whilst I was doing this top part of the farm, I accidentally stepped into this cutscene where the wizard showed me our own nexus. Pretty cool. On day 148, I created a warp room for my farm, and made some sashimi for Pierre, who rewarded me with a thousand gold. I picked up my shiny new axe, and then agreed to take down the prismatic slime for the wizard. I dropped off the remaining eggs for Gus's omelette, before heading up to the mines where I found the prismatic slime literally on my first try. That was easy! I used my new nexus to get to the wizards, and found these dewdrop berries in the enchanted grove. Look at those stats, they're amazing! And they last till the next day! After that distraction, I handed over the jelly and was promptly shooed away, so I went to the secret woods because I was determined to hit level 10 foraging. Finally! I could become a botanist! Oh wait, I forgot I chose the wrong profession before though. So for now, I selected lumberjack. On day 149, I got the recipe for monster musk. As it was a good luck day, I wanted to give Skull Cabins a go with the power of the dewdrop berry. Quite a few gems were obtained, and we got a couple of treasure floors, but they literally just had a seed maker and some energy tonic, and one of them just had bean seeds. 
On day 150, I reset my foraging professions and asked Clint to upgrade my watering can. I got an early night, so I chose the botanist path and made a fair amount of gold too. Day 151 was the first time I picked up Iridium quality truffles. It was the day of the luau, so I added some goat's cheese to the pot, which the governor seemed to be obsessed with, and ended the day by crafting a few more crystallariums to put jade into. The next day, Gus gave me a jukebox. When I went into town, I skipped the Emily Bird cutscene because I was eagerly awaiting the opening of Pierre's. Why, you may ask? Because we can now get the bouquet to try and date Victor, and he accepted. From there, I wanted to go collect my watering can when I saw Clint going for a wander. Where do you think you're going, sir? I need my watering can! On day 153, I waited out in the rain for Robin to open so that I could drop off the materials to restore the old shed. But then I found out this was not the place. Yadingus. Before I went home to find the right spot, I picked up my watering can and then started the upgrade to the Iridium Axe. This was a mistake though, as I had a whole bunch of trees blocking the path to the shed. I even tried blowing them up to find out that you can't. So I made my escape to Ginger Island to show our froggy friend our new Bombo Juicy Melons. And in exchange he gave me his nuts. He next wanted the yellow tickled thing, so we planted some wheat. Day 154 was a blueberry day, and I at long last picked up my club card. Should have done it a week ago. The next morning, I ran into Clint's store until he unlocked it so that I could pick up my new axe, and then headed to the special request board to grab Marlon's mysterious venture. He basically just wanted a bunch of bombs. With our trusty new axe, I could finally get into the shed, where I found the box to drop off the materials, and then laid a path to make it easier to get to. But I hated it, so I destroyed it all. On day 156, I hung out in the mines until the Adventurer's Guild was opened. When I went to see Marlon, he showed me a place to make a warp broom to the mountains and then I dropped off his bombs and collected the slime charmer ring. When I went home, I spent the evening replacing those paths with stone ones, and I think that looks much better. On day 157, Robin unveiled the refurbished shed which has loads of space for aging wine, and an upper floor where we can grow even more indoor crops. The first thing I did was check what we needed to make casks, to find out that we can't until our house is fully upgraded. Which, speaking of upgrades, we asked Clint to upgrade our hoe and then headed to Ginger Island to show our froggy friend the yellow tickling thing. I then decided to fix up the beach resort, which looked lovely, and then spent the rest of the day in the volcano where I enchanted the axe with the swift upgrade. Day 158 was spent in the volcano again, farming for more cinder shards and dragon's teeth. I also enchanted my sword. On day 159, my garlic was ready, so I brought our froggy friend to see, in exchange for the last of his golden walnuts. With that now dealt with, I zoomed off home to harvest all of my blueberries, and asked Robin to build us a shed. She also stopped by my own house to ask for 900 stone to build a bridge. On day 160, we got a couple of good achievements, and then I made myself a farm computer which we placed over here. The rest of the day was spent at Ginger Island on our quest for more walnuts. On day 161, we cleaned up this area because it was getting kind of fugly and got this weird request from Lewis for some truffle oil. Why can't I ask him? I'm gonna ask him. Lewis, why do you need this oil? Ew. His response grossed me out a little bit, so I struggled to collect my reward. Day 162 was a productive day in Skull Cabins looking for stone and iridium, but we were absolutely insulted by this treasure floor. Corn seeds? Are you kidding me? This one was a little better though. I'll take some farmer's lunches. The next day, our shed was completed, so I picked up all of my kegs and moved them in there along with a few more that we just crafted. I left one outside though because that would show us when our wines were ready much more easily. See, I'm learning. It was Victor's birthday, so we gave him a rabbit's foot, and then made a start with collecting some hardwood for Robin's project. On day 164, I got this really cute cutscene with Victor. I won't tell you exactly what happens, but we took a walk to hang out at the summit. How lovely. After that amazing start to the day, I headed to Robin's to buy some stone for her bridge. Wait, why couldn't she just use this stone? She has unlimited stone! Anyway, I also got her to build me a fish pond, throwing it down in a temporary spot for now. Day 165 was a good luck day again, so I headed to Skull Cabins. This was the worst good luck day I've ever had. This treasure chest is mocking me, and when I tried to make an escape, I died. I don't know if something went wrong though, or if I just got really lucky, but I didn't lose anything. I was so confused. On day 166, I pre-dropped off Robin's hardwood, so now all I had to do was chop it. I then sailed over to Ginger Island, where I visited this area for the first time. I caught another golden walnut, and played some darts with the pirates. On day 167, we got our last blueberry harvest, and we got a cutscene at Clint's, where we were asked for 30 gold bars for a strange commission. What we actually came here for was to open some golden coconuts, where we got a walnut, a fossil, and some pineapple seeds. And then returned home to replace our sprinklers with iridium ones in prep for four. Very grateful for the UI mod helping me not to mess this up. On day 168, we finished gathering the hardwood for Robin's project and collected our reward. I love doing these types of quests this way around because then I can't be stopped by the house being closed on the final night for the hand-in. And now we're into four. 
On day 169, I planted 150 cranberries, and a few artichokes as well because they were new. I went back to Pierre's and bought more cranberries before going home to plant them. I also had 150 pumpkins to plant, but I didn't have enough time to water everything before the day was over. I did my best though. On day 170, I added to my ancient fruit crop and added a path to the greenhouse. I wish it stayed all horizontal though because this kinda looks a bit weird, but whatever. And then the rest of the day was spent in the mountain mines looking for gold, which continued into day 171 where I gathered 123 pieces of ore. Not bad. On day 172, I moved my coop so that all of my animals are in one area and then asked Robin to upgrade my house. I picked up a special request for Victor's mum, who was asking for some starfruit wine, cheese and goat's cheese. Wow, that is fancy. Today was the first rainy day since getting 10 hearts with Victor, so I ran over to the old mariner to pick up the mermaid pendant, and then just about managed to catch him on the pier whilst he was on his way to Ginger Island. And of course, he accepted our proposal. With that major goal completed, I headed to Clint's to drop off the 30 gold bars he asked for, and was disappointed to find no reward at all in my journal. Then I headed to Ginger Island to plant my 200 star fruit that I left in the chest for the past few weeks. I'm gonna need some for that wine. On day 173, I picked up an oyster off the floor right by Elliot and gave it to him for his birthday. I popped to the secret woods for some hardwood, and then found Clint waiting by my house to let me know he cleared the path to the old shed. So this was the reward for the strange commission. On day 174, I asked Clint to upgrade my watering can, and then headed to Ginger Island to complete this gem puzzle thing for a few golden walnuts, which meant I finally collected enough to unlock Mr. Key's walnut room. He said it's a secret room, but I feel like that big purple door with a giant golden walnut in it kinda gives things away. Anyway, after watching the rest of that cutscene, I checked the challenge board where I accepted the four precious stones quest, as I knew I had enough prismatic shards at home. I also went and checked the profession. I also went and checked the prof- I also went and checked the prof- Blah. <laughs> Words are hard! <laughs> I also went and checked the perfection tracker, and uh, we have some work to do. Day 175 was my wedding day with Victor. It was a day of celebration, and I got to bring him home to a brand new extended house. I didn't check it out yet though, because I noticed it was a good luck day, so I geared up and headed to Skull Caverns where I got down to floor 82 before passing out for the day. On day 176, I moved my coffee machine from the middle of the kitchen, and then sold off some of our goodies from mining the day before. I found this mysterious bridge over here, which looks so ugly, so I tried to remove it, but I couldn't. I guess Victor must have built it here. It was our first cranberry harvest of the year, so I worked on that, and then gave my sturgeon a diamond that it asked for. Whilst gathering blackberries, I went and picked up my steel watering can, and upgraded to an iridium hoe, before stopping in at Olivia's house to drop off the cheese. I also got a new cutscene at the abandoned vineyard, where there was this new bundle, but I couldn't read what was written this time. On my way home, the wizard shat me up. A mysterious golden scroll appeared in my pocket so I went to investigate with the wizard, but he couldn't understand it either, so he had to ask for help from this witch. Looks like it was a young Juno requesting 200 star fruit, which luckily we had already just planted some. When I woke up on day 177, Victor told me he watered some of my crops, but I have all sprinklers. You smell that? Bullsh**. I stormed off into town to pick up my iridium hoe, but it wasn't ready yet. So I planned to clear my head by foraging blackberries all day, except I got distracted by this warp point where Peaches gave me an ancient Junimo scroll and brought me to their friends so that I could make a warp room. But when the cutscene ended, I was back outside, so I went right back in again. This whole area is like a maze, but there was this tablet which told me to follow the mushrooms, and they led me to this sword that I couldn't pick up, so I left. On day 178, I actually picked up my Iridium hoe, and then spent most of the day foraging blackberries before heading to Ginger Island to work on the tropical fish request for Willy. On day 179, I went to upgrade to an Iridium watering can, completely forgetting I needed the gold one first. Dingus. And then went over to Beers to buy the deluxe speed grow for my starfruit, not knowing I could have got it from Sandy's today, much cheaper. Double dingus. Anyway, I went and slapped it straight onto my starfruit so I could start on the wine a little bit earlier, and dropped off my prismatic shards for 40 key gems. And of course, since I've never played Junimo Kart in my life, I decided to choose the 50k challenge, which meant day 180 was completely dedicated to this. And this is how my first attempt went. Got a little bit of a good start yet? Yep, we made the first jump, grabbed the cherry, and we're dead. I spent a real life hour here, and it was driving me bonkers. Then I realised it must be quite late in the game day surely, so I took a break to see that no time had passed at all. I gave it another 15 minutes, and I did get a little bit better, but still… No. <laughs> My partner Michael, who was playing Elden Ring, wanted to give it a go, and this is how that went. This is harder than the boss I just did. My god, all that concentration made me hungry. On day 181, I checked out my brand new basement. Okay, I've seen it now. 
I went outside to craft another 57 casks, which I immediately went and placed. Then got round to get my gold watering can started. Of course, the afternoon was back at the saloon. I was determined to finish this challenge. We aren't giving up. We can do this. Another hour here, and we didn't... We, we didn't do it. So I went for some deforestation instead. On day 182, I started aging some wine and then cleared up the area outside the restored shed before heading to Ginger Island to catch the remaining tropical fish for Willy's quest. Because at least we can complete that one. On day 183, I did a walk of shame back to Mr. Key's walnut room to pick up a new challenge since we suck at Juno and Carl. I accepted the one where you have to get to 100 and Skull Cabins without eating or drinking whilst there. When I got home, I collected my deluxe fish tank from the mail and then harvested all of my pumpkins. My watering can was ready, so I went and picked that up. Then accepted Pierre's prime produce, which is a bit annoying considering I just harvested 31 gold star pumpkins. I even debated resetting the day, but I decided to just roll with it. In the end, I ended up selling those pumpkins, instead buying 100 bok choy seeds because they were the fastest to grow. Oh wait, no, 150 is 150. Then it was time to plant. Day 184 was the day of the fair, so I set up my display with better items than last year and then awkwardly followed Lewis around whilst checking out the competition myself. And this time, I actually won with a score of 98. Thanks for the tokens, dude. With those, I bought a triple shot espresso and a fedora. On day 185, I got my first sturgeon row and dropped it straight in a preserve jar. To prep for Skull Caverns, I went to buy bombs from the dwarf, then fished out the necklace since I was passing the bathhouse, and ended up giving it back to Abigail since everyone makes mistakes. It was also starfruit day, so we grabbed all of that and took it straight to the shed to turn some of it into wine, filling the rest of the cakes with blueberries. On day 186, I picked my cranberries and bought some more starfruit seeds for the vineyard bundle. I also bought this pink shirt because it was cute and I like pink things. Since I still had some speed grow down, I planted my new starfruit before I could forget. And with the cranberries, today was amazing money day at 72,000 gold. On day 187, my bok choy was ready. With 58 gold star ones, I could now complete Pierre's prime produce. But when I went to drop them off, I got a cutscene with Abigail asking me to play Journey of the Prairie King with her. Again, I've literally never played this before, so as you can imagine, it did not go well. This game was honestly overwhelming. My brain was fried and I barely got anywhere, and Abigail was not impressed either, but at least I tried. With that distraction over, I dropped off the bok choy and sold the rest straight to Pierre, using the money to buy a workbench and a telephone from Robin. The next day was a good luck day, so I went to buy even more bums from the dwarf, and then teleported to the desert to work on the key challenge. I made sure to eat a dewdrop berry and drink some espresso before I left so I could still use the buffs. I didn't make it to floor 100 though, because I died on floor 59. Yikes. I lost my blackberries and some spicy eel, which could have been a lot worse really, but I did really want those blackberries back so I went to the adventurers guild to buy them. On the bright side, since I'd slain 150 magma sprites, I now had Marlon's telephone number so I could recover items from home. Oh, and I got the napalm ring. The following morning, I wanted to try again, so I munched on another dewdrop berry and headed back to Skull Cabins. Except this time, I died on floor 61. And lost a few things. As this was the final day, this does mean we failed our second key challenge in a row. But at least I had some caviar now. On day 190, I dropped off the caviar and took a trip to the volcano to combine my vampire ring and a ring of yoba. I then hunted for some cinder shards so that I could combine an iridium band with a protection ring. On day 191, I wanted some golden coconuts opened, so I waited very chill, very patiently, outside Clint's for him to open. Inside them, I got some taro tubers, a fossil, some pineapple seeds, and a banana sapling, then returned to Ginger Island to pick up our fourth key quest. Let's see if I can actually do this one. When I got home, I tried to fish for trash in my little pond, but I actually kept getting fish. Felt a bit weird really, so I left that for now, and went to explore the new warp point in the Enchanted Grove. It took me to that place from that cutscene. I tried to steal some of the ancient fruit, but I couldn't, so I proceeded to fish in the sparkly water where I caught some cool new fish. The meteor carp and the golden fish. Oh, and you can catch the wood skip here too. Day 192 was starfruit wine day. I picked up my wine and headed to Olivia's cellar to drop it off, claiming a massive 80 grand. This was well worth it. Then, it was time to attempt the new mines. Ooh, lucky ladder. I actually got a fair amount of loot. I got my first radioactive ore. I fought a boss slime for an enricher. And I got my first galaxy soul, but my god these squiddy things were an absolute nightmare. I ended up warping home on floor 27, so I did feel like I did decently today. On day 193 I misclicked. How did I do this again? I didn't fix it yet though. I just had a coffee to drown my sorrows, and then it was back to the new mines to make some more progress which continued into day 194, but I had to leave on floor 69 nice. because I almost died. 
So I went home to collect my truffles and then went fishing for the void salmon. Day 195 was filled with more mining. I even skipped Spirit's Eve this year to pass out on floor 106. Apparently, overnight we gave birth to a baby girl. I don't even remember when I decided to have a kid. But anyway, the game named her... Uh, sure, Freckly. Now that I was no longer carrying a child, I had a much easier time getting through the mines today, reaching the bottom with plenty of time left in the day. There was this weird little shrine thing, which I'm guessing lets us do this version of the mines again. Whilst I've been in here the past few days, I completed a couple of Monster Slayer goals, so I collected my hard hat and savage ring, then finished off the season strong by expanding my ancient fruit crop and making a decent amount of gold. On day 197, I completed the missing bundle, which gave me this adorable cutscene. Be free, little friend! I also got this cutscene for Olivia's reception, which increased my friendship with the people there and gave me more benefits for drinking wine. I won't do this though because I really don't like wine. From there, I headed to the wizards to buy my first obelisk, but I was literally one clam short, so I left that for now and grabbed my star fruit from Ginger Island so that I could drop it off at the Aurora Vineyard on day 198. But nothing happened, so I returned to Ginger Island to check out Mr. Key's shop and bought Pierre's missing stock list as well as the key to the town. I also have no idea what I was thinking this day because I then proceeded to pick up the Junimo cart challenge again. I guess I wanted to redeem myself. I started to get kind of frazzled though, so I did give up on this pretty quickly, and instead went home to redo the paths. On day 199, someone was knocking at my door. It was Lewis. We hopped the fence alongside my farm, and for 250,000 gold, I could own this piece of land too. Of course, I decided to go with the expansion. All this room for activities. Meanwhile, something interesting was going on at Aurora Vineyard. It didn't seem to be fixed up, but I did meet little apples. It said that from tomorrow I can come and talk to apples, so I went over the first thing on day 200, but I couldn't find them. So I went to check out the new movie theatre and bought a ticket for myself and for Victor, and then ran straight home to give it to him because I was excited about seeing my first movie. I picked out an ice cream sandwich as a snack, and then took our seats for the Miracle of Cold Star Ranch. Victor seemed to enjoy his snack very much, and I thought this was a lovely way to end our next 100 days. So, how do we do on our goals? Well, I do know we didn't finish finding all the golden walnuts, and to be honest I have no idea which ones are now left, so finishing this one will be interesting. We successfully married Victor, and even had a child with him. We got close to buying an obelisk, but didn't make it because of one single clam. And as for our tools, we got all of these ones to Iridium, with the watering can lagging behind it gold. That means we only completed one of our four goals. Massive yikes, really. Confirmed, I remain noob status. I played 300 days of Stardew Valley Expanded. This mod just continues to amaze me every single day. There's just so much to explore. This time I had four main goals, which mostly suggested in the comments of the last video, so you know what to do. Number one, get full friendship with everyone. I'm gonna need this for recipes. Number two, get the master angler achievement. I really don't like fishing so you get to see me suffer. Number three, buy the return scepter. At two million gold I'm gonna have to figure out how to make a load of money. And number four, get the infinity blade because that is a cool weapon. Before we go on with the video I'd really appreciate if you could like and subscribe. These videos take an absolute age to put together so any support would mean the world to me. And with that, on with the video. When I loaded up on day 201, I got a cutscene with Victor asking me to come watch him work at the bridge. I recapped my journal which was a bit chaotic and then reorganised some of my messy chests in my inventory. After refilling my kegs with coffee, I went to give the wizard an iridium bar that he requested, taking some more with me to Clint's to upgrade my watering can, but he wasn't there. That afternoon, I went to meet Victor by the quarry bridge where I was shown this cutscene which hurt my heart. Once I pulled myself together again, I took the boat to Ginger Island to check on my tarot and unlock the mailbox, as well as the farm obelisk. On day 202, I hunted for the mummified frog, not realising that I'd already donated it. Turns out I mistook it for the bat. I checked my progress on the perfection tracker, mainly being interested in the number of walnuts, but also to show how much more work we still need to do. I then went home to check on my animals because I hadn't seen them in a while, and set up some blueberry wine. On day 203, I made more mayo and cheese machines which I set up in my second shed. Clint was now around so I could finally upgrade my watering can before heading to Willy's to buy some trout soup. I went on a bit of a gifting spree, starting with Caroline for her birthday, then up to Robin's arm with some goat's cheese, with the others getting the leftovers. Looking at my fishing progress, we had a long way to go to a master angler so it was time to get started. But then I suddenly remembered that we needed to start talking to apples. What a cutie. 
Anyway, back to fishing. My goal here was to try and get the glacier fish today, but it was far too difficult and I suck. So after a few attempts, I gave up for the night, with a plan to return with some dishes of the sea and cork bobbers to make the fishing bar bigger. On day 204, I went to give Victor a rabbit's foot and instead was given a star drop, so that was pretty cool. I just installed the to-do list mod, which is a lifesaver, so I put myself together a list of things that I wanted to get done, then it was off to the ice festival. After talking to all the villagers, I took my place for the fishing contest, which I won. I went to bed victorious. On day 205, I wanted to give apples a gift, so I had to take the long old walk over to the Aurora Vineyard. I was thinking to myself, why can't I have a warp point for this? But when I got there, I got this cutscene where apples helped me to make one. It's like the game read my mind or something. I needed a new special request, so I picked up the one for Sophia's Fairy Garden, and here are all the items that we're going to need. I thought it was just going to be flowers, but then there's fairy stones, and fairy dust too? I grabbed the seeds from Pierre so I could grow the flowers for the fairy dust, and headed to Ginger Island to plant them on some random pre hoed spots. My tarot was also ready, so I harvested that towards the island ingredients quest. On day 206, I accepted the Skull Cavern's invasion quest before collecting my watering can from Clint's and got him to open some frozen geodes looking for fairy stones. I only got three. From there, I went to the mines to smack some dust sprites, but forgot I had the harder mines on, so I decided to make the most of it by hunting for some radioactive ore, but that was literally the only node I ended up finding all day. The bright side was that these mushroom things still counted as dust sprites, so I managed to complete the monster slayer goal. On day 207, I opened 69 omni geodes, nice. looking for some more fairy stone. Donating some of the new stuff I got for two new rewards, a chrysalarium and a magic rock candy. But from all those geodes I only found two fairy stone, so I still needed five more. When I got home, I cut some hay because I was almost out, and then set up an area for a tree tapper farm. On day 208 I wanted to make some sea foam pudding, which means I'll need midnight carp. I took some wine to Gunther for his birthday and then chopped loads of wood for the rest of the day, but it was time to catch that fish. I ended up passing out with two of them. On day 209, Willie asked me for a lingcod. Luckily, we caught some last night. After making my sea foam pudding, I refilled the kegs and then trekked up to Robin's to ask for a fish pond. As I still needed more fairy stones, I went back up to Clint's to even more omni geodes, but received exactly zero. I decided now was the time to catch the glacier fish, so I chumped my sea foam pudding, and after a few tries, we actually got it. Oh my god, I can't believe I just got that. And then I ended my day by giving Willie his lingcod. Day 210 was the last day for Mr. Key's Skull Caverns quest, so I headed to the desert to get it done. I had 80 staircases and my magic rock candy with me, so this shouldn't be too bad. Other than the freebie ladders, I mostly bombed my way down, finding a fair amount of treasure floors. I made it to floor 100 just before 5pm, so I carried on down looking for more treasure floors, and even got my first auto petter. I ended the day by passing out on floor 156 with all these goodies. The next day, I put my auto petter in the barn and dropped a midnight carp in the pond before requesting Robin to build me a stable. I wanted to pick up another key quest but was disappointed to find the exact same two as last week, so I left. On day 212, I harvested some pineapple as well as the remaining taro for the island ingredients quest, then finally collected my burglar ring. It was a night market day, so I bought the painting on display, then spent the rest of the night fishing in the sewers. On day 213, my stable was finished, so I went to greet my first ever horse, which I named Bullseye. This was a really exciting moment for me because I'd literally never had one in Stardew before. It was the wizard's birthday, so I trotted over to his tower with a gift, then visited Apples with a gift, which he pretty much just gave straight back to me. Um, okay. I returned to the wizards for my horse and got this adorable cutscene, then spent the afternoon in the mines hunting ghosts for ectoplasm which I handed to the wizard for two and a half grand. On day 214, I got the recipe for the mini obelisk, which I immediately forgot about, and found out my secret friend this year was Demetrius. I suddenly realised Sophia asked for fairy rose seeds and not the flowers, so I dropped into PS to buy another 50. I planned to spend the rest of the day in the mines gathering frozen geodes, but I realised I could just put the fairy stones in crystallariums for the quest, so I tended to that instead. On day 215, I made a bunch of triple shot espressos so that I could have a speed hordes, which I rode up to Marlon with a birthday gift. Then it was back in the mines on the hunt for iron. On day 216, I got Victor to Max Hearts. I went to Ginger Island to harvest my fairy rose, then bought myself a horse flute from Mr. Key. I needed more key gems, so I accepted the four precious stones quest again. 
then went home to collect some things because I wanted to upgrade my sword at the volcano and complete that key quest. But when I got back to Ginger Island, I realised I forgot to bring my watering can and the prismatic shards. Home we go again, you dingus, we'll take care of that tomorrow. Day 217 was back at Ginger Island to hand in that key quest, which meant I could buy the final galaxy soul needed to upgrade my sword, so it was off to the volcano for the day. Instead of going straight for the forge, I did have to fight my way through because I had no cinder shards with me. I got to the forge by 10pm, excited to see that it was only 20 cinder shards that I needed. I had just enough, but when I did the upgrade I suddenly realised that it was three separate attempts. Disappointment. I went home for some supplies, then my fairy stones were ready which meant I now had everything I needed for Sophia's garden, so I rode over to her house on day 218 to hand everything in for 35,000 gold. After that, it was back to Ginger Island again to work towards that infinity blade when I found over 150 cinder shards just chilling in a chest, so I went straight to the forge to get my new weapon. Oh, and I combined the burglar ring with an iridium van too. On day 219, I got my first banana, so I took it to the shrine in the jungle in exchange for some golden walnuts. I wanted to try and get the mummified bat, so I was in the volcano yet again, and I was also looking for some dragon's teeth towards the island obelisk. I started day 220 by shipping all of the cooked dishes in my chest as I had accepted the key quest to ship 100k's worth. These were nowhere near enough, so I headed to Pierre's to pick up some more ingredients when I got this cutscene with Abigail and Caroline. With that out of the way, I bought some flour and sugar, and galloped back home to cook all the food that we could, working towards the cook all dishes achievement at the same time. I fished for the rest of the day, and when I went to sleep, I was disappointed to find out that we only made 25k from all of that cooking. Yikes. Day 221 was the feast of the winter star. I gave my sturgeons a nautilus shell, then I fished in the tiny pond until it was festival time. Whilst I was doing my rounds, Victor said he had a gift for me when we got home, so I had that to look forward to then went over to Demetrius to give him his gift, which was also an order to the shell. Kent was my gift giver, and he gave me 10 deluxe speedgrow. Thanks, Kent. I then wanted to head home to find out about this gift from Victor, but when I walked in the door, he was already asleep. Time for bed, I guess. On day 222, I finished planting my greenhouse, and made some more coffee before going to visit apples with some starfruit. When I left, I sensed a new pathway had opened up, so I went to check it out. There was this beautiful spring called Sprite Spring where I was introduced to Klaus and Angelica, although you don't actually get to see them. I was immediately allowed to summon a warp here. Look at all the stuff we can forage! And when you swim in the water, which restores energy, you also get a different buff each day. This mod is full of surprises. On day 223 I fished at Shearwater Bridge and hit level 10 fishing on my way to explore Grampleton Fields a bit more, noticing this mysterious tower. I noticed there was also a warp point, so I tested it out to find it land you at the wizards. I couldn't find anything else to do here, so I left. To carry on working on Master Angler, I went fishing in the mines for the lava eel, but I kept just getting trash. I suddenly remembered I'd accepted Linus's community cleanup earlier in the week, so I decided to stay and make the most of it. After a couple of hours, I collected enough trash to complete the quest one day before it expired. When I went to turn in for the night, someone was at my door. It was Camilla, here to kidnap me. She took me to a new location, the Crimson Badlands. Looks scary. I created a warp point here so I can come back and explore. Overnight, I picked the angler profession, and on the morning of day 224, I was straight back to the Crimson Badlands for an adventure. It started with this cutscene, warning me that I should be prepared, but we all know I was going to wing it. Isaac showed me a map that he said I'd only get to see once, and we all know what my memory is like, so I did panic a little. As soon as I got in, there were so many enemies. I was pretty much surrounded the entire time. I found the castle gate, which isn't functional yet, and this area with loads of swords on the floor, which, of course, I had to pick some of them up. Shortly after, I found the big corrupted serpent, which I attempted to fight, but as soon as it touched me, I died. Luckily, Camilla came to the rescue. She didn't take any of my gold, but I did lose my farm totems. I let myself recover for the day, going to the adventurer's guild to retrieve my farm totems, and selling all those spare weapons we found. When I got home, I found this strange capsule on my farm, so I moved it indoors and went to bed for the last time of the year. Now it was time for Grandpa's assessment, and I'm gonna be honest, it was my first time ever getting this far in a save file. He said some really nice things, so I was feeling good about it. And when I stepped outside on day 225, the shrine was lit with all four candles. I was so proud of myself, and it meant I could collect the Statue of Perfection. The first of spring is always a busy one, so I cleared up the land, got rid of those old sprinklers, and replaced them with iridium ones. 
When I popped back in the house, I got a cutscene with Victor letting me know that Shearwater Bridge will be closed for refurbishment for a few weeks. Then, it was time to ride into town to buy my seeds. This year, I ended up going with 400 cauliflower seeds, which I planted with some basic fertiliser, but it took me so long to prep everything that I didn't have time to get everything in the ground. So I went to carry on on day 226 to find that I had to redo some of it. Got there eventually though, but I did have to go back to Pierre's to get enough seeds to field the rest of the field. I checked the special request board to see Pam was asking for the strong stuff again, so I accepted it. We weren't going to fail this time. I went home to craft a couple of solar panels and planted Pam's potatoes, when I realised that this mini shipping bin is in the dumbest place. Why have I just put it next to the bigger one? I moved it next to the barn to make it easier to sell the truffles, and ended the day by finally setting up my crafting bench. On day 227, the wizard was at my door, letting me know of the arrival of little Morgan. Ugh, not another NPC to make friends with. I forgot about that for now, and headed to Ginger Island to fish, getting absolutely mocked by this bubble spot which disappeared as soon as I arrived, so I left to try get more walnuts using my slingshot, but I failed at that too. I decided I want to use Ginger Island for starfruit, both for wine and for gifts for apple, so I cleared up the land in preparation before spending the evening catching a couple of new fish. The following day, I went to give apples to starfruit, and in return, I got a rock. Thanks, I guess. I was almost out of starfruit, so I went to visit Sandy to buy some more seeds, along with some deluxe speed grow to go with them. I popped by the wizards to give him a gift too, when I met little Morgan for the first time, and had another cutscene with the wizard where I found out that Angelica is actually the crop fairy. It's so cool that they gave her a story. I tried to leave the tower and got yet another cutscene. I love that this mod adds to the wizard story, and I think this one's for if you wanted to date the wizard, but I'm already married so we went with the other option. Now that those are done, I went to Sprite Spring to see what I can pick up this season, and there was an ancient fruit. And, because of the botanist profession, I picked it up as Iridium quality. Oh my god. Then, it was back to Ginger Island to plant my speedy starfruit. On day 229, I found another walnut, along with my first ostrich egg. I went back through my journal scraps to try and figure out what walnuts I was missing, but I couldn't find anything helpful, so I took the boat back home and got this cutscene with Linus which I skipped. Now that we're in spring, it's time to catch the legend, except I found out it had to be raining so we're not doing that today, and instead I made some more kegs and preserves jars. On day 230 I renovated my house and bought more rabbits from Marnie, here are their randomly generated names. I spent some time in my greenhouse making more ancient fruit seeds for a second set of crops, and then chopped wood for the rest of the day which I used on day 231 to start an organised storage room because my chests were getting full. It was Lewis's birthday, so I gave him a spicy eel before I could forget, then caught Victor on his way to work, confused by the cones that he placed there himself. The remainder of the day was spent going in and out of the house getting the new storage room organised, so things were starting to have a proper place. On day 232, the potatoes were ready, so I plopped them straight into the kegs, with the rest of them getting filled with more wine. Then, the afternoon was once again spent chopping more wood. We can't seem to get enough. Oh, and I took a quick break to check Sprite Springs and there were sweet gem berries? But those don't come out as iridium quality. Well, back to woodcutting. But hang on a minute, where does this go? Looks like I've got my own personal spring, with more forage and mahogany trees. How has this taken me till year three to find this? No! On day 233, I placed a dresser that I don't remember buying so that my chest could be free of hats and rings. Then I went to check the Adventurers Guild for my Monster Slayer goals. Looks like I've only got the mummies and the pepperwax to go. Then, the afternoon was filled by continuing my quest to deforest the entire map, and came home with just over a stack of wood. On day 234, I harvested some truffles and rearranged the outside area, before going on a little gifting spree to work on friendship. I also planted some rhubarb. On day 235, I fished for some fish as there was an overpopulation problem then made a bunch more casks for the restored shed because we needed a lot more money for the return scepter. The next day, I chopped wood AGAIN for the morning. My potato juice was ready, so I collected it and rode my horse straight over to Pam's to drop it off. We actually managed to do it this time. The rest of this day was, you guessed it, chopping more wood. I'm really getting sick of this. On day 237, my cauliflower was ready. I wanted to leave it for the chance of a large one, but then I realised it was egg hunt day and I had nowhere to plant my strawberries. Better get to work then! 
First thing I did when I got to the festival was buy my strawberries, but I had to guess how many because I forgot to check how many sprinklers I had free. This year, I was feeling pretty confident about the egg hunt. I got my best ever score of 9 eggs, and I finally won! Yes! Finally! I went home victorious to plant my strawberries. On day 238, my first aged wine was ready, but when I went to ship it, I realised that all that waiting really wasn't worth it for blueberry wine. Live and learn. I upgraded my second barn before heading to Ginger Island to harvest my starfruit and moved my solar panels to a sunnier place. Then, replanted my starfruit. As it was a Sunday, I traded my janes for staircases, then proceeded to deforest the desert. On day 239, I got my first ever giant crop. What a moment. But instead of keeping it around, I decided to harvest it because we needed the money. Having learnt from the other day, I started some starfruit wine and grabbed one of my gold quality blueberry wines for Olivia's birthday. When I left, I got a cutscene with her, asking if I'll turn my farm into a vineyard like Sophia. I told her, I'm not quite at a large scale production yet. Then, it was on to Apple's house to deposit all of my gold quality starfruit in a chest so that I always had gifts at the ready. Being the 15th of spring, it is now salmon berry season, so I ate some pancakes so that when I harvest the bushes I get four berries instead of three, except I literally only harvested this one bush because I realised it was Monday, so there were new key quests and I made the mistake of picking the Keys crop quest, not knowing what I was getting myself into. On day 240, I harvested some salmon berries, then had trouble adding the barn upgrade to the to-do list due to the animation cancelling script. Um, we'll just roll with it. Whilst out looking for berries, I met the trash bear for the first time, who was asking for a herring, and also dropped off a load of eggs at the saloon, as Gus wanted to make another omelette. I stopped in to see apples, who gave me an ancient seed. I had to double take because I couldn't believe it. The morning of day 241, I opened a bunch of geodes and bought a load of bombs from the dwarf so I could hop in the mines for iron. I quickly got bored of that, so I asked Robin to upgrade my second barn again. On day 242, I picked up the group of cheap aged wine, but didn't refill the cask yet because I wanted to refill the entire basement at once. Since I didn't seem to have one back home, I fished at the beach for a herring, which I wanted to give straight to the trash bear, but got distracted by this cutscene, which was the result of Sophia's fairy gun. That reminded me that she sold sprinklers, so I bought all of her iridium ones. Okay, back to the trash bear. After the herring, the next thing he asked for was a sardine. Luckily, I just fished one of those up too. The third thing he asked for, I couldn't figure out. I knew it was a cooked dish, but I'd never seen it before. A long time after recording this, I've now come to learn that it's mango sticky rice, but I didn't know that at the time. Back at the farm, I set up my second area for ancient fruit in Grandpa's old shed. It's looking like I'm gonna need a lot more ancient seeds. The next morning, Sophia was at my door thanking me for a fairy garden, which meant I now unlocked new things to buy from her. Turns out it was iridium sprinklers and pressure nozzles, but we already knew about those from yesterday. Out of nowhere, I remembered the Junimo woods existed and I hadn't looked at it properly yet. I didn't realise till this moment that these were all actually shops, and look at what they sell. There were artefacts, the legendary fish, we've got some gems, some seeds, some decorative pieces which I'll definitely have to come back for one day, and lastly some of the deluxe stuff and magic bait. That afternoon, I wanted to have another stab at the Crimson Badlands because there were fish there I needed, but before I went in, I thought I'd try Sprite Springs to see if I'd get a useful buff. I got farming. Rubbish. When I got there, Isaac was outside selling some things, some powerful weapons, and a recipe for an attack potion, but I ended up just buying the pre-made ones instead for now. It took me a while, but I managed to get a peaceful window to catch the undead fish. Then, I wanted to try and find the cave, but was completely unprepared for the sheer amount of mummies here. It was overwhelming, but I got through to find this treasure room with a chest that had a prismatic shard shaped keyhole. Unfortunately, I got surrounded on my way out and died. This time, losing my infinity blade. You lost three items. No! But I can just get that back from Marlin. When I woke up on day 244, my key fruit was ready. I was disappointed to find out you really do only get one per plant, so I gave up on that quest. After giving Shane a hot pepper for his birthday, I was back at the Crimson Badlands, armed with a prismatic shard for the treasure chest. But I died again. And again! Time to take a break from that, maybe. Just kidding, I went to the saloon to buy salads as a better healing food, and jumped right back in. Except this time, I accidentally used a farm totem. No! Oh. Fourth time's a charm, maybe? 
We finally made it. I put that prismatic shard in the keyhole and got a galaxy slingshot in return. Oh! This one increases the damage of Iridium ore. On day 245, I had some strawberries to harvest and bought five new pigs for the newly upgraded barn. I harvested my ancient fruit to turn into more seeds for the shed garden, made another 50 casks, and started a new batch of starfruit wine. When I went to turn in for the night, I got a cutscene with Victor. Turns out the bridge refurbishment was now complete and he wanted me to come for an unveiling tomorrow night. So on day 246, I mined for iron all day till it was time for the date. Just kidding, I got bored of that and went to Ginger Island to accept the legendary fish quest. So that's what I did for the rest of the day. I didn't catch anything good though. I suddenly realised I needed to get to the bridge, but I got there 10 minutes too late, so there was no cutscene. I was so upset. The bridge was looking great though. On day 247, I picked all of my rhubarbs as well as all of my starfruit. I gave Gus eggs for yet another omelette, got a cutscene with Haley, which I skipped. Then tried to go into Shearwater Bridge a little earlier than 10, and hey, we made it! You're right, Victor. What is a bridge renovation without a good plate of spaghetti? On day 248, some of my trees had grown, so I placed some tappers. It was the flower dance today, but first I paid a visit to Apples, who I also happened to find outside the flower dance. I bought the tub of flowers recipe, and one of these rare crows, and whilst talking to all the villagers, I became popular! Now that's something I never thought I'd say. Then, it was time for my second year of awkward dancing. Squat! 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 Day 249 was my second and final strawberry harvest of the year. Then it was off to the mines for coal and iron until the Adventurers Guild opened so I could collect my arcane hat from Gil. Now, I only had to kill 23 Pepperex to become a monster slayer hero. I wanted to go to the desert to do this right away, but Pam wasn't there. She must be too hungover today. I didn't want to rely on her anymore, so I went to the wizards to see what I'll need for the desert obelisk, and out of everything, I think I only needed the money, so that was going to be my next priority. On day 250, Sandy was asking for a diamond. Luckily, I was planning to go to the desert today, so I could take care of that pretty easily. The day was spent in skull caverns with the sole purpose of killing them dinos, but I only found three because there were no prehistoric flaws. So after giving Emily a birthday gift on day 251, I headed back to Skull Caverns to continue. I still didn't find many dinos, but I did come back with six prismatic shards the next day. It was the last day of spring, and it was raining, so this was my last chance to catch the legend. I was determined. I was going to do this today. It did reinforce my distaste for fishing, but at long last, I did it! And whilst I was in a winning mood with fishing, I went and caught the mutant carp as well, and then celebrated by giving apples some starfruit. I started day 253 like we start any other season, by prepping the fields and going into town to buy seeds. But when I walked into Pierre's, I got the cutscene about his secret stash. Don't worry Pierre, your secret's safe with me. Anyway, I bought some blueberry seeds and some melon seeds, and for some reason, one hot pepper seed. Time to get to work planting, which took me pretty much all day by the time I added the fertilizer too. On day 254, all of my casks were free again, so I refilled them with starfruit wine, and any that were left over I added blueberry wine to. I also collected my first ever aged cheese, and whatever blueberry wine we had left over we just sold because it was not worth saving. I chopped wood again, before finally bringing that largemouth bass to Jodie's. Who knows how long she's been waiting for me for dinner, and why do we just put it on the floor? I got a cutscene with Shane which I skipped because I've had my dose of cutscenes today, and chopped more wood on my way to bed. On day 255, I asked Robin to upgrade my keg shed. I wanted to enchant my fishing rod, so I spent the rest of this day grinding for cinder shards, and by the end of the day I had enough to do it, but I was looking for the master enchant which increases your fishing level by 1, and this wasn't it. On day 256 my starfruit was ready, and I finished filling my second ancient fruit area. I finally had enough money to buy the desert obelisk, and used the painful method to move my skull cavern's chest over next to it. On day 257, I modded my horse to a cuter one. Look at it! I made use of my new obelisk to pop to the desert to buy more starfruit seeds, because it dawned on me that I forgot to replant them yesterday, so we took care of that real quick. After finding my cinder shards at home again, I came back to the volcano to enchant my fishing rod again, and this time we got what we needed. But I still spent the evening in the volcanoes anyway because we still needed that mummified bat. We didn't get it yet though. On day 258, I gathered fibre from the mines whilst doing the cave patrol quest, where I had to slay 50 grubs, finishing it just before 10pm. 
On day 259, I was in lumberjack mode. And on day 260, I mined in the volcano looking for the mummified bat. Still no success. On day 261, I panned by the dig site all day, looking for a fossilized tail and the lucky ring, both of which I got. I celebrated in the volcano for the evening, finally getting that mummified bat. But what am I doing here? I threw away the tail. Why? Oh my god. And when I went in to hand the bat, I realised my mistake, so I passed out at the dig site trying to find it again. It's okay though, because I got it back first thing on day 262, handing it in right away. Now that I had completed all the fossils, I learnt the recipe for the ostrich egg incubator, so of course, I went home to craft one and popped that egg right in. That evening, Apples invited me to a party, so I went over right away, but nothing really happened, so I went home. Day 263 was the luau, so I walked up to the pot and dropped in a pineapple which made for an excellent soup. Success! On day 264, I placed some more kegs before getting this cutscene with Sophia, where I decided to cheer her up by going to pet Dusty together. I foraged at the beach where the sea was this really weird green colour whilst on my way to Ginger Island to drop off more prismatic shards for Mr. Key. And then I combined my lucky ring with an iridium band. On day 265 I got a large melon then headed to Clint's to open geodes because my midnight carp were asking for a mudstone. On my way home I got this weird cutscene with Emily which was made weirder because I tend to play with the music off. Oh that's right, I actually stopped here to see what clothing an opal would make and got this pretty shirt which I changed into immediately. Then I took Shane to the hospital which made me forget what I was doing so I went to the beach and found Hayley's bracelet then went on to catch the crimson fish. Bit of a fighter this one. The last thing I did this day was rush to plant some more starfruit seeds because all this distraction today made me forget to refill this field. But hey, we made a decent amount of gold today. Day 266 was a blueberry harvest. This is honestly one of the most satisfying crops to pick. Look at them all. I wanted to make some more preserve jars, but then ended up accidentally making 23 casks. Oops. I guess I still needed them anyway. From there, I popped to Ginger Island to harvest and replant my starfruit, adding any remaining seeds to my home farm. On day 267, I got a scam phone call, which was weird, so I ignored it and went to see Apples getting this cutscene, which was really sad. I told Apples they made more plant friends and those aren't a mistake. The bear even came by and brought maple syrup to the party. This just got so adorable. Then it was back to chopping more damn wood. But I also got this cutscene where I got the chance to ask Linus to live on the farm with me. But I know he likes his way of life out here, so I didn't do that. Bless him. With all that wood, I asked Robin to upgrade my other shed, and then got round to giving Gus his lobster. On day 268, I worked on my friendship with Shane, which meant I got this lovely cutscene of him giving a gift to little Jazz. And then I continued chopping wood for Robin's resource rush. And just because I needed an absolute butt ton of the stuff. I used some of it to make more preserves jars, and yeah, not casks this time. Day 269 was a good luck day, so it was a good day to descend skull cabins, coming out with a few rain totems, 5 prismatic shards, a couple of hats, and 149 iridium ore. A decent day overall. Overnight, Victor asked if we should have another baby. I said, nah, I'm good, and day 270 was another good luck day. So it was back to Skull Caverns again, where I managed to complete my final Monster Slayer goal. I didn't come out with quite as much stuff, but I did find this cool cowboy hat. During the night, Sherty gave birth to a baby pig, which the game named Prillers. The next morning, I harvested my blueberries before setting up a chest for that key quest, where you have to give 100 items of each colour. I wanted to have it ready for whenever it might pop up so I could just grab it and go. And then I rode into Sintasat Forest to harvest a load of hay because the farm was running out. On my way into town, I made Clint finally ask Emily out, then made my way up to Demetrius to give him a birthday gift. Speaking of gifts, I also went to give Apples a starfruit, and then they said, Apples excited! Apples found starfruit! Share with Apple friend! And like, huh? You found it? I just gave it to you! Uh, anyway, time to go home and harvest my ancient fruit. On day 272, I'd just finished recording the City Witch and forgot to remove my camera from the screen, so this is going to be here for a little bit. My bad. Oh, I know. That's better. 
Now that my shed upgrade was done, I went to rearrange it and my ostrich hatched today. So we went with the name Patza. Look at it, I'm so happy. Then I took a quick trip to Ginger Island to harvest pineapples for another round of island ingredients before returning to the Adventurers Guild to pick up my last Monster Slayer reward. Doesn't that look stupid? On day 273, I collected my reward for the island ingredients quest and tried to give my horse a hat, but on this modded horse they looked super awkward, so I got rid. I managed to get some more coal, so I placed some more preserves jars, and on day 274, I decided to go fishing because I needed the octopus. And honestly, this thing cost me my sanity. It took me three full minutes to be able to reel it up, but we got there. I never want to do this again. I even ended up shipping it because I didn't want to catch another one solely for that purpose, and then spent the rest of the day in the harder mountain mines because I accepted that quest from Mr. Key again. From there, there was like a month break from recording because we went on our wedding and honeymoon trip, which, if you haven't seen the vlog already, you should totally go check it out because it's in a very similar style to these videos. That meant, when I woke up on day 275, I couldn't remember what I was doing. I went outside to harvest my blueberries and also refilled my kegs before sailing over to Ginger Island to deal with my starfruit, making sure to share some with apples of course. And when I went to leave the vineyard, I got a cutscene introducing us to peaches. Aren't they adorable together? On day 276, I hit up the casino to play some games of Calico Jack and replanted my starfruit because I kind of forgot yesterday. Let's blame the jet lag. On day 277, I remembered about the Mr. Key Mines quest, so I went and worked on that. And after a quick starfruit harvest, this continued into day 278 and day 279, finally getting it finished on day 280. This meant I got to wrap up the summer by going to the Dance in the Moonlight Jellies. And now into fall, the final stretch. After prepping the land on day 281, I got a cutscene at Shearwater Bridge. Camilla came to say hi, and added more fish to the water here. I also got this cutscene with Evelyn, talking about some memories with my grandpa. Then it was time to get my seeds. This year, I bought 288 pumpkins and 400 cranberries, except it was meant to be 384, so I gave some back. Back on the farm, I planted all of my cranberries, but the wheat still wasn't ready, so the pumpkins will have to wait. Luckily, it had grown the next day, so I could plant my pumpkins on day 282. Now that I was building up a stock of wine, I decided to go and count how many casks I had, because that meant any excess wine could be sold. In total, I've got 266 casks, so I left a reminder for myself before going foraging in the desert for some reason. I can't quite remember why. On day 283, I checked in on my bat cave and succeeded at catching the anglerfish. And on day 284, I went and bought a magic rock candy as well as a load of deluxe speed grow which I slapped on the cranberries. For the evening, I fished in the sewers for the radioactive bass, managing to catch a good few of them. After picking all of my ancient fruit on day 285, I went fishing at Shearwater Bridge, catching the butterfish. I was also looking for the puppy and kitty fish, but those end at 2pm, so I left it for the day. Instead, I headed to the mutant bug lair, scoring my first slime jack, and also a difficult void eel. Gross. On day 286, I was back at Shearwater Bridge to catch the kitty fish and the puppy fish. So freaking cute! Look at them! I decided to check in with my fish catch in progress, and look how few we have left now! After consulting the wiki, I realised that there were some fish I needed to catch in new areas that I had not even visited yet, and these required friendship with Lance and Marlin, so there was no way I was going to do this in time. So that goal has to go out of the window. I still wanted to get as close as I could though, so I continued into the mines to catch the lava eel, which appeared after a stupid amount of trash. And on my way home, I bumped into Martin who I don't think I've seen in over a year. On day 287, I went and sorted out my starfruit farm, which I really should have done yesterday, and then took out my frustration for my mistake on the local trees. That night, I fished near the pirate's cove, looking for the elusive shiny Lunaloo. I still didn't catch it. On day 288, I used some of my key gems to buy some recipes before heading home to harvest my first cranberries of the year. I wanted more ostriches, so I incubated another egg and then cleared out the auto grabber in the coop because I hadn't touched it in a while. On this day, I'd finally stocked up enough wine for the next round of aging, so I could now start to sell some and made a decent amount of money from that today. On day 289, I opened up some artifact troves, getting the rusty cog I needed, and I scored this treasure chest. 
After donating that rusty cog, all I needed was the yellow strange doll to complete the museum. The rest of this day was spent harvesting blackberries. On day 290, I went to visit apples and hit all 10 hearts, so I went outside to trigger this cutscene. Little Apple shared some starfruit with us, and said that the others at the Junimo village said that they should make new friends, so they grew all these starfruit plants. We played together for a while, but I got caught by Andy, which was kind of embarrassing. I thought maybe Apples would restore the vineyard, but uh, nope. Day 291 was a good luck day, so I trumped that magic rock candy and went into Skull Caverns for the day, which meant I woke up on day 292 with a bunch of fun things. 7 prismatic shards and 378 iridium ore. Bloody brilliant. It was Ancient Fruit Friday, so I did the rounds before checking for anything new at the vineyard. There wasn't, so I left. Day 293, another cranberry harvest, but also it was Abigail's birthday, so I went and gave her an amethyst. Another full friendship complete! At this point, I remembered a secret note that I'd not taken care of yet, so it was off to the desert to get that last strange doll. And of course, I went into the library. No, that's Clint's. Let's try that again. I went to the library right away to donate it, and... nothing happened? We didn't dwell on it for now though, because something was going on in the Junimo woods. There was some sort of Junimo party? Apples was there. I don't know, all they were saying was meep. But then they all headed towards Aurora Vineyard. Could this be it? Are we going to be able to use this now? They took me to the Mother Starfruit Tree, and after sharing their special knowledge, Starfruit now sell for a higher price? Oh my god, I was not expecting that. On day 294, I checked my collections for the museum to see that all the pieces were filled. I didn't know this at the time, but it turns out that this shows what you've collected and not what you've donated. So it was going to take some time to work out what we were missing. When I went back to my house, a Junimo said that there was a new item for sale. So after finishing adding kegs to my shed, oh my god that's so unsatisfying that there's only one left, I went to go check it out. There was this cutscene with Abigail, but I skipped it. I needed to know what was in that shop. It was a super starfruit. Does that mean I can ask Apples to come live with me? Of course I bought it and took it straight to Apples, but they just look puzzled. Turns out that this was because I'm already married, so it's a bit like having Krobus as a roommate. The rest of the day was for basic farm chores and giving gifts. And overnight, we made loads of money. You know what that means. Oh wait, Apples is at the door. Now I finally had the decision to refurbish the vineyard or have Apples live there. And of course, I asked her a furbish. Apples has friends at the Junimo village now after all, and they do seem happy about it. We'll go have a look at it later, but first, we ran to the sewers to visit Krobus, because it was time to buy my return scepter on day 295, five days before the end. I did buy a void egg to give to Krobus too. A good day so far. After pushing Emily out of the way to give Sandy a birthday gift, we went to see the vineyard get refurbished. Look at Andy just creeping in the corner. I wonder what he sees. Looks like he didn't know the old owners though. And here is our third house. Looking forward to filling this out in the next 100 days. But for now, we chop wood. On day 296, I left my pumpkins alone again because I wanted a big one. It was the day of the fair, so I set up my display in an attempt to destroy Pierre. And I absolutely did with a score of 112. I bought myself the rare crow, then quickly popped over to Sandy's to buy starfruit seeds. On day 297, some items were placed in Lost and Found, which made me realise I forgot to clear out my Grange display. I still had no big pumpkin, so Bullseye took me into town to retrieve my items. When I got to Lewis's, I got that fashion show cutscene, so I skipped it, because I really wanted my prismatic shard and puppy fish back. From there, I headed to Ginger Island because the fair yesterday meant I couldn't harvest my starfruit on the day it was ready. On day 298, my pumpkins finally merged and I had a few giant crops, which I was super excited about. This meant I could harvest the rest of my pumpkins, and also had to pick my cranberries today too. It was now too late to replant pumpkins, so I ended up buying a load of beets because these only take 6 days, and I couldn't put down any speed grow due to the fertiliser that was already there. I then decided for whatever reason that the way I wanted to earn everyone's love was through spaghetti. Sounds legit? On day 299, I picked up some soggy forgotten troubles while going on a spaghetti gifting spree. Oh, Leo doesn't like spaghetti. Right. The rest of this day was spent chopping wood for more kegs and casks. On day 300, I went to check on my ostrich egg, but my barn was full, so I moved one of my pigs to the other barn so that the ostrich could hatch. 
with the name ending up as Bortley. Being the final day, I wanted to decorate it a bit, so I added some parts where I hadn't really finished them and just had a little bit of a tidy up. I sorted my to-do list for the next time I play so I don't start off being completely clueless and then went to sleep for the last time making 27,000 gold. So, how do we do? I feel like we made a decent amount of gold this year, so much so that we were able to buy our return scepter, and we did of course get our infinity blade. For the shipping tab, we've only really got a few items left, although I haven't got a clue what any of these last ones are yet. And here's our fishing progress. It's incomplete, so of course we failed our master angler goal, but that's because we got to go to brand new areas we've not seen before. We've officially collected all the museum things, but we'll figure out next time what's not been donated yet. I cooked quite a few more dishes this time, and we only have a few achievements left. There was also only one more journal scrap to find. As for our friendships, I feel like we made a good amount of progress, but in all honesty, there's just so many people and they keep introducing us to new ones. It's so hard to keep track of, but um, yeah, that's another fail. Which means we got two out of our four goals. Not amazing, but hey, I never claim to be good at the game, right? Right? I played 400-ish days of Stardew Valley Expanded. We've come a long way in the past few hundred days. And you'll notice I said 400-ish days? You'll see why later. But before we get started, I'd love if you could like and subscribe. These videos take many, many hours and your support would mean the world. This time, we're going for six main goals, some of which were suggested in my comments. So thank you to everyone who put one in. Number one, hit 75% perfection. Let's see what we can get. Some of the next goals will contribute towards this. Number two, Get at least 5 hearts with all villagers. Number 3. Reach 100 in skull caverns without using any staircases or bombs. This one's just for fun really. Number 4. Build all the obelisks so we can get around easier. Number 5. Get those 3 weird secret statues, again, just for fun. And number 6. Get all of the star drops, which really is another way to just push me to catch all the fish, isn't it? So without further ado, let's begin. On day 301, I made that one more keg to put in the shed, so now it's completely full. With that now dealt with, I could then refill my jam jars before checking out the brand new secret woods. There were a bunch of new items to forage, and the whole area was so much bigger, this was so cool. After a fun day of exploration, my wine was ready, so I refilled the kegs with starfruit. If I wanted to get everyone to 5 hearts or more, I needed to start right now. So my first gift went to Marlon, but wasn't the most successful. As I rode back into town, I got this cutscene with Abigail. For this video, I vowed to never skip a single cutscene. Are you proud of me? Are ya? On day 302, I saved up enough gold to buy the island obelisk, so of course that was the first thing I did, making use of it right away to check on my ginger island farm and work on getting those remaining walnuts. For this, I used Wickedy's guide to help me. I couldn't remember which ones I'd already got, so I literally followed the entire guide, checking each and every one. And yep, I finally figured out how to get this damn walnut. That afternoon, I decided to check the perfection tracker to see how much further we had to go to meet our goals, and to see how many walnuts were left. I was determined to get the rest on day 303, starting with this flute block puzzle, and getting the final walnut from this tree. I still had the shiny lunaloo to catch from Ginger Island, so I sat getting soggy at the beach, waiting for the evening to arrive, which is the time of day to catch it, but I quickly got bored of that. So I popped off home to find my cranberries were ready, which meant I now had something to do. Okay, now it was time to go catch that Lunaloo. But honestly, this thing is ridiculously hard. And after a several minute fight, I failed. Ugh! So I went home to cook a seafoam pudding for assistance and went right back to try again. Success. Oh my God, I got it. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I actually did it again. On day 304, I picked one of my beets started some more cranberry jelly, and added a couple of new crystallariums to the crystallarium room. I got this cutscene with Shane whilst on my way to catch the brand new bull trout, and continued with my fishing progress by trying to get the grass cut from the secret woods, but these are only available in spring and summer, and it took me a while to realise that. My inventory was full anyway, so I went home to sell. On day 305, I wanted to figure out once and for all which museum piece was missing, the way I did this was I took a screenshot of the museum and then went through screenshots of the collections tab, crossing off the ones I had already donated, and here is the result. I was missing a Bixite, which I found in Magma Geodes and Omni Geodes, 
so I headed to Clint's with all the ones I had, but after all of those, I had no luck. I did end up saving a lot of the minerals and stuff for clothing though. I needed some more geodes, so after giving the door some spaghetti, I bought some more bombs and jumped into the lower floors of the mines because I thought I'd end up with the best chances of getting bixite from the magma geodes. This isn't actually the best way to do this. After recording this, I found out that the tiles with the geodes are predetermined, which means you can just go to that floor over and over again to hit the same rock when it's there, and pretty much guarantee a geode each time. But uh, I didn't know that yet. This meant I woke up the next day with 25 magma geodes, but it's Friday so Clint won't be there. Instead, I did my greenhouse drawers and went to Ginger Island to set up a new batch of starfruit, including a quick trip to Zandy because I ran out of seeds. I made use of the rest of the day on my quest to earn everyone's friendship with spaghetti, except Lance, who apparently doesn't like it. On day 307, I caught the scorpion carp and made another attempt at catching the bonefish. Success! When I got back to town, I got this cutscene with Marnie, who taught me how to make cheese wheels. This makes cheese more valuable. And whilst I was there, I bought a few new pigs using the bulk animal purchase mod, which means I can buy more than one at once. I learnt about this mod from Gamergar's video, so thanks to him for making me aware of its existence. That afternoon, I had lunch with Andy and wasted a rabbit's foot on Morgan, who only thinks they're neutral. Then, it was time for Spirit's Eve. I brought myself the rare crow because I couldn't remember if I had it yet, and claimed this year's golden pumpkin. The last day of fall began with a cranberry harvest. Being a Sunday, it was a new gifting week, so I dropped off some rabbit's feet, got this cutscene with Alex and Dusty, and had a drink with Pierre. I finally went and processed those geos from the other day, and thankfully I got the bixite I needed, so of course I went and donated it right away, getting the complete collection achievement and collecting that star drop. Now, the only star drop I needed was the one for Master Angler, and we were really quite close at this point. I celebrated by picking up this tree on the crane game, and then popped to Robins to build another fish pond. Back at the farm, I refilled my kegs with starfruit, which meant we went to sleep making a decent amount of money. Day 309. I had big plans this winter to reorganise how I farm, starting with moving all of these sprinklers and clearing out space for them at Aurora Vineyard. I dropped into Sophia's to buy more pressure nozzles when I decided to look closer at the wine. Turns out it's great for luck! Look at the aged one! Plus 7 luck?! Day 310 and the prep continued. Clearly, I miscounted how large the sprinkler radius was so I made some adjustments and held the spots using fibre seeds. But the most annoying thing is you can't remove these little bushes like you can on the regular farm. I did need to take a break from that, so I headed to Sprite Springs to pick up the flowers and find out what these comments alluded to. Noticing this cave behind the waterfall, I went to check it out and found all these mushrooms and ancient fruit. I am bummed that I did not know about this sooner. When I got home, I crafted a couple of mini obelisks because for some reason I would not made any yet, dropping one outside my house and the other up by the warp room because I seem to travel between those places the most often. Later, I got this cutscene with Kent, who was thinking about joining the Adventurers Guild, going in there myself to give another bad guess for gift to Lance. Bit of an oops, but at least I managed to catch the ice pip today. It then took me till 9pm to remember that all that aged wine was ready, so I quickly refilled all my casks. Here comes the money! Oh wait, I forgot there's still quite a lot of blueberry wine. Ew. On day 311, I got a special request from Andy to help him make some preserves jars. He needed quite a lot of materials, but the only thing I was really missing was a single iron bar, which luckily I was already smelting. Here you go Andy, enjoy sir. I finally got around to shutting my barn doors because I'm sure that my animals were just loving the freezing draught, and then placed down a few grass starters so that they could spread in the spring. My new fish pond was also done, so I chucked in a kitty fish and ended the day by adding some more mayo machines to my shed. On day 312, I traded three prismatic shards for a magic rock candy in the desert before speeding off to Ginger Island to destroy the invading weeds and harvest my pineapples, without forgetting to drop a mango to Leo of course. But I didn't stay long because I wanted to make some more casks to add to the Aurora Vineyard cellar. All those casks meant I needed some more hardwood, so I chopped down the mahogany trees at the spring by my farm. This was all for my goal of making more money. With that in mind, I needed to expand my tree type of farm to make a bunch more kegs, so I planted and fertilised more oak trees. On day 313, I got a new recipe from Leo, then spent some time making a bunch of new clothes with the artefacts. I wandered into the saloon to restock my supply of spaghetti when I found this recipe, which was new for the latest update, so it was a good thing I came. New recipe had some new berries in it, so I tried to look them up on the wiki, but there wasn't really any information on them yet, so I'll have to figure it out myself. 
This made me forget what I actually came in here for, so I left without buying any spaghetti at all. I found one of the berries, the bear berry, in the secret woods, but had no luck yet finding out how to get the salal berry. On day 314, I realised I forgot to harvest my ancient fruit the day before, so I decided to move that day to every Sunday so it's just one big wine day. But today, I ventured into the Crimson Badlands, looking for crafting materials, and because I wanted to slay that massive corrupted serpent, although I did spend most of the time running. Ah! Because we do have to take care of all the little ones first. And after a long and difficult fight, oh no, I died. Annoyingly, I lost some of the stuff I came here for, but I didn't let that get me down. I just grabbed some food and jumped right back in to try again. This time, we succeeded. Day 315 was my first officially named wine day, so I harvested my ancient fruit from the greenhouse in Grandpa's shed before refilling my kegs with a new batch of wine. It was also a star fruit day, so I popped over to Ginger Island to handle that, and then went on a little grifting spree around town, getting this little cutscene with Elliot, which I've never seen before because honestly, I always forget to make friends with him. Day 316 was the Festival of Ice, so I used this opportunity to talk to everyone for those sweet, sweet friendship points and wipe the floor with everyone at the fishing contest. Day 317 was a good luck day, so I geared up to go to Skull Caverns. With the magic rock handy and the aged blue moon wine, that meant it had plus 12 luck with me, so let's test it out. It wasn't long before I got my first treasure floor, which was... Yam seeds! Yikes. This was closely followed by melon seeds. Let's see what else we get. Now that's more like it. I planned to have this cool little montage of all the things I got, but then my inventory got full and ruined it. I did get really excited about the second auto petal though. Out of the 330 floors I visited, 32 of them were treasure floors. So I woke up the next morning with all of these goodies. Although it's worth noting that I threw away any seeds I got, some of the food, and some of the duplicate hats. When I checked my mail, I got this cool thing to commemorate having made 10 million gold. So I slapped it down in my house with this awkward line of furniture, and then added that second auto petter to my coop. It was Sebastian's birthday today, so in typical non-friend fashion, I waited creepily outside his bedroom door for him to leave so that I could give him his gift of a frozen tear, which meant I got this cutscene with him on my way out. I started day 319 by bringing some breakfast to Lance, but it turns out he hates pancakes too! After harvesting my pineapples, I sprayed on some monster musk to help me with some coal farming for the rest of the evening. Day 320 was Gunther's birthday, so I brought him a blueberry because it matches him, and then handed out some spaghetti. I got this cutscene with Sam, which was like being at a silent disco. But yeah, I picked the dance music. I also got this cutscene with Shane, which means we can finally get ourselves some blue chickens. And of course, we had to buy one right away, which the game name Whiskers. I wanted to bash out one of my main girls pretty early, so I made haste to Jodie's house to pop a strange bun in Vincent's toy box, receiving weird statue number one. From there, I went to hunt for my location number two. In Stardew Valley Expanded, the HGMTF statue is not behind Clint's, except at this spot behind the community centre. Whilst I was there, I tried to find that stone Junimo again behind the community centre, but with no success. So I turned my attention to the saloon where I picked up my third and final secret statue. On day 321, I added more casts to my Aurora Vineyard cellar before planting loads of mahogany trees out in the desert. I gifted Sandy some cheese which I can only hope didn't melt in the heat, but then it was back to the Freezing Valley to buy the furniture catalogue, and to ask for a slime hutch to be built. I'd never built one of these before, and I didn't know till now how monstrously large it is. I'ma have to rearrange some stuff first, and uh, this location will have to do. I got this lovely cutscene at Pierre's with all of the local farmers, where I stopped by to buy the floor and wall catalogue. I wanted to decorate my house, and I did rearrange a few things and change some of the floors and wallpapers and stuff, but it didn't take me long to get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of choice. I am happy with the crystallarium room though, I think. On day 322, I started with my weekly ancient fruit harvest, made a big batch of coffee in the keg shed, and set off the next lot of cranberry jelly. By the time I dealt with that, the coffee was ready, so I refilled the kegs with staff room. Being a new gifting week, I went around town handing out some cheese, this now being my main gift of choice. When I got home, I was excited to see the kitty fish needed something, except it was 15 strange buns? Absolutely not. On day 323, Marlon greeted me on my doorstep with a slime egg because the slime hutch was now complete. I didn't really read anything properly though, so I made myself a slime egg incubator, not realising there's already one in there. Oh well. Now we can hatch two eggs at once. 
I also slapped the sprinkler down in here because I know that the slimes need water. I got this new cutscene with Marlon and Gunther, who asked me if I could help Gunther with a bit of cave diving. So of course I obliged, so I'll have to remember to come back tomorrow morning. The rest of this day was spent in the regular mines. I can't quite remember why, but I'm guessing it was for stone. I did, however, take a quick break to go shopping at the night market. I spent day 324 in Skull Caverns as it was a good luck day. This was the day I decided to tackle the challenge goal of getting to floor 100 without any bombs and stairs. And we made it before 3pm. Yes. In fact, I carried on to see how far I could go and ended up passing out on floor 213. So on day 325, I came home with a few prismatic shards and a couple hundred iridium ore. But other than that, the treasure floors were kind of meh. I forgot to help Gunther the day before, but luckily he was still waiting for me at the Adventurers Guild today. And it was a good thing I was there, because I saved him from this evil slime. That afternoon, I went to Ginger Island getting this cutscene with Leo on my way to harvest the starfruit a day late. And in the evening, I went on a little gifting spree at the night market, also buying this painting. On day 326, I received payment from Gunther for yesterday, and a note to say that my secret friend this year is Robin. My first two slimes had hatched, so I put a couple more eggs in the incubator before taking a quick trip to the desert to buy a magic rock candy and some more starfruit seeds. I moved my coop to a new location because my animals kept running out of grass in that other area, and then added this little path around it. But best of all, we made some perfection progress today by building the last two obelisks. I didn't really like where I had the slime hutch, so I tried to move it elsewhere, but it literally didn't really fit anywhere suitable, so I pretty much just put it back where it was and I put my shipping bin in this corner as well, because I thought it made more sense. Lastly, I rearranged my obelisks in this formation, because I feel like it looks nicer. What do you guys think? On day 327, I moved this mini obelisk because I kept accidentally teleporting when I tried to refill my furnaces. I dropped wood in Cindersap for a bit, before deciding to change my profession for this, so I went home and added to my tree tapper farm. When I got my early night that night, the professions kind of glitched so I couldn't change them. This meant that I had to go back to the sewers the next morning and spend another 10 grand. When I got home, it was time for the next batch of cranberry jelly, and then I filled this gap with the last furnace because honestly, it was bothering me. I wanted to try and get some more stuff to decorate my farm from the crane game, but when I got to the theatre, this dude was in my way. How dare! I said hello to Martin with some cheese, and left to drop into the library where I got this cutscene. It was really cool to see everyone enjoying the completed museum. And I also got this cutscene in Andy's new cellar, where he gave me his jam recipe, making strawberries worth more money. Overnight, I managed to change my foraging professions to Forester and Lumberjack. After receiving the Galdoran gem in the mail from Gunther, and 50 Jojo Colas from Andy, which, uh, why? Just why? I picked up some more staircases from the desert, then headed back to the valley to chop wood in West Cindersap for the rest of the day. And in doing so, I found this little cave that took me a minute to figure out, but when I did, it revealed the bear's shop, which included two new recipes that I definitely had to pick up. On day 330, I deposited most of my freshly chopped wood and dealt with the wine I forgot about yesterday before heading up to Robbins to ask for a third shed because I needed to expand my wine production if we were to have any hope of making the amount of money we need. Everyone seemed to be passing through town, so I used this opportunity to work on friendships. And to be honest, we were starting to make some really good progress, but we still had quite a way to go. I hopped over to the Crimson Badlands for a bit to find Camilla selling some super cool elixirs. The lightning one in particular has plus 8 speed. I need that. But also, I picked up the Barbarian one which boosts your attack. This evening was spent chopping wood because I happened to pick up Robin's resource rush again, and I might as well make the most of it. Once that was done, I went back to the sewers to change my profession back because I was probably done with wood for now. On day 331, Lee agreed to me at my door with this sculpture. Um. Thanks. It's... lovely? I chose to display it in my kitchen, then went to see her again, and she's making another one of those sculptures. Now I feel less special. I tried to go in again, and got another cutscene. But with all those over with, it was time to give her some birthday cheese. I didn't stay long, because it was a good luck day, so I ate some magic rock candy and dove into Skull Caverns for the day. Besides your usual blowing stuff up and jumping down holes, we got another auto batter. I'm feeling lucky. Although honestly, other than that, the haul was pretty mediocre. On day 332, I manually pet my pigs for the last time and slapped down that auto petter, so I could forget about my truffle finding machines. I went coal farming for a bit, but I got bored of that and went to Clint's to buy some instead so that I could smelt more metal to make more kegs for my brand new shed. That evening, I wanted to top up my spaghetti supply, 
but this dingus bought a load of pizza instead. No. Oh. On day 332, I wanted to buy something from Mr. Key's shop, but then it dawned on me that I only had one key gem, so it was time to pick up a new key quest. I went with the prismatic range because I'd already been saving the items, so this should be pretty easy. But I can't do that yet, because today is the feast of the winter star. So after saying hello to everyone, I gave Robin some goat's cheese for her gift, and received an iridium bar from Clint. I didn't want to forget about Sandy, so I stopped by the desert and gave her a gift too. But also, I wanted that last rare crow, so I went to the casino and bought all the key coins I needed for it, grabbing that rare crow to take home. It can chill up here for now. During the night, Wallow gave birth to a baby pig, which the game named Shadow. And on day 334, I was expecting a mail with a deluxe scarecrow recipe, but it didn't come. So I went around the farm and gathered up all the rare crows I had to try and figure out what was missing. I knew I had the witch one somewhere, so the one I was missing was the snowman, which was especially annoying because we just had the Festival of Ice not that long ago. Luckily, the travelling merchant can sell this one, so I'm glad it wasn't any of the others that were missing. But she didn't have it today, so we're going to have to keep checking. It was starfruit day, but before I dealt with that I wanted to hand in my key quest, so I dropped in all the items except the blackberries which don't count as purple? I'm going to have to find something else. So I went home and grabbed everything purple I could think of that wasn't too valuable. But looking back now, I don't know why I didn't just think of using Void Essence because I had an actual buttload of the stuff. But I ended up depositing some of my Iridium ore, which to me is blue, but whatever. With my new key gems, I bought a few pressure nuzzles, then got around to replanting my starfruit. On day 335, it was time for a new batch of cranberry jelly. It was also Sophia's birthday, so I trotted over to her house with a fairy rose, which she loved. But that was another friendship complete. I foraged over at Sprite Springs before rearranging my sprinklers at Aurora Vineyard with the new pressure nozzles. I still had 10 iridium sprinklers left over, so I made use of them by setting them up in the Grampleton fields for spring, and gave them a little path border. I started day 336 by checking the travelling merchant, but all she was selling was pure disappointment, so I went home to harvest my ancient fruit. My silo was empty, so I quickly refilled it for my starving animals, then wandered around town for a little gifting spree. I wanted to come get some tea leaves, but for some reason I got this cutscene again. I still got what I needed though. When I left, I got this really sad cutscene with George, which I'm not sure if it's in the vanilla game or not, so I won't spoil anything. I checked in on my slime hutch to notice that all of my slimes were female, so I incubated my last egg and placed a slime press to make another just in time for all the wine to be done. Spring had sprung on day 337, but before we could get our seeds, Leah was at our door telling us about her art show. After she left, I cleared the debris from my farm and let out my animals who were all hangry, so whilst they were eating I went to Pierre's to grab my seeds. This year I was going for a different approach, as I needed ingredients for recipes, so I brought a sprinkler's worth of each crop, with the rest of the space to be filled with cauliflower. Then it was time for the first big planting of the year, but before I could forget I did go grab some rhubarb from Sandy too. I wanted the chance at a large cauliflower here, so I knocked down this pumpkin and replaced it with cauliflower seeds. It took me all day to plant my farm as well as finishing setup of Aurora Vineyard, so I had to complete planting of the Grampleton fields on day 338. Before I could do that I was back at PS to buy more cauliflower seeds, because it turned out I made a massive miscalculation and had nowhere near enough. But we managed to get everything prepped, planted and watered by the early afternoon. This meant I was now free to attend Leah's art show, even though it was meant to be yesterday. And after all that hard work, I chilled out with a bit of crane game, taking home this cute little Junimo plush. I was also back at the casino again, because I spotted something cool in the shop here. A statue of treasure? I didn't know what it did yet, but it looked cool. On day 339, I found out the statue gives us artifact rose, which I suppose makes sense when you look at it. Being a new season, I checked the secret woods for new forageables and fished for the grass carp. On day 340, Marlon was at my door telling me to drop by the guild. So after a quick IRL snack, I headed up to the mountain, getting this Linus cutscene along the way which told me about his past. When I got to the guild, Marlon was finally going to give me permission to use his boat, but first I had a quest to do. I missed this detail initially though, and was confused when I came out and still couldn't use the boat, so I left that for now and went mining for radioactive ore as it was a good luck day. Eventually I caught on to the need to help Marlon before we could use his boat, so I went home to gather the necessary items ready to give to him the next morning. Now we just had to wait, 
so I went home to harvest my first truffles of the year, as well as my first crops of the year. I went and checked on Sophia because she was upset earlier, and then I got a cutscene with Andy at Aurora Vineyard where he told me about the history of the place. I was loving learning about the lore. Same with the hat mouse too. Super cool. What I didn't appreciate was Andy then kicking me off my own property. Sir, you are the one who needs to hippity hoppity out here. But I did anyway because I wanted to check in with Sophia again, staying to watch anime with her, which did help her feel better. I then went home to plant some more potatoes and open up the other barn that I completely forgot about. On day 342, Marlon was at my door again asking me to greet him at his dock, but before I could go to him, I had to take care of the spreading weeds on my ginger island farm. With that now done, to the boat! After a super long journey, we arrived at Lance's outpost where we discussed the strange seas from this region, so I was tasked with growing them and bringing them back to Lance. The cutscene brought me back to the valley, so of course I hopped right back on that boat for some exploring, but got another cutscene letting me know to expect some elixirs in the mail. I didn't want to wait for those though, so I ventured out right away, and it didn't take me long to pick up some new seeds. I also found this cave which had so many ores, but also so many monsters, but I fought my way through because I needed to catch the gemfish here, which turned out to be far too difficult without buffs, so I left to find this area with all these mystic nodes, coming away with 5 prismatic shards. On day 343, I woke up with 24 life elixirs in my mail from Lance, before going to deal with my star fruit. Being a Sunday, it was wine day, so I dealt with my usual weekly chores, then fished up some of my midnight carp because I really needed more seafoam pudding if I wanted any hope of catching that gemfish. After grabbing some of the abundant ores in the Highlands cave, I ate my seafoam pudding, determined to catch that fish. It took me the entire day of failing, till finally, at 1.10am, we caught it. I never want to do that again. That night, we made 800,000 gold, and on day 344, I used some of that to buy the hero elixir recipe from Isaac. Not forgetting to give Lance a birthday gift while we were there too. I still had some exploring to do, so it was back to the highlands where I found this dino which actually killed me. Luckily, Lance saved me and I didn't lose anything. I wasted no time in trying again, and this time I managed to kill it. It dropped some treasure, and a golden key? Not sure what that was for just yet. There was one more area I hadn't seen here yet, so I broke the stumps to find some cool ruins where these little mushroom monsters lived. These dropped various mushrooms as well as the fungus seeds I needed. I also had one more fish to catch here, so I grabbed myself a daggerfish, leaving four fish left before I could get the Master Angler achievement. On day 345, I went to plant my fungus seeds on Ginger Island, then got home to see some of my crops were now ready, but for some reason I ignored them for now. I ended up looking up what that key was for, and I needed to locate an area of the Highland Cave which had a dwarf who needed saving. We let the little guy out and he seemed grateful. Then, I spent the rest of the day clearing out the cave. Day 346 was Vincent's birthday, but when I got to his house I got this weird cutscene with Sam. Who offers raw egg as a snack? I'm so confused. Anyway, happy birthday Vincent, enjoy your grapes. I got this cutscene with Haley outside Marnie's ranch where we took some pictures with some cows, but then she fell, and I was expecting her to be mad but she said she had fun. On day 347, I grabbed all of my rabbit's feet to keep with me, because I wanted to make more progress with friendships. I got a cutscene with Krobus playing with a Junimo, so I went to ask Krobus what's up, and he said they went to show in the Junimo village, which is so cute. On this day, I pretty much just rode around town giving out gifts to whoever we needed to improve friendship with, and as you can see, we've made some great progress. We still had a long way to go but one of them was about to get quite a bit easier because we got the cutscene asking Leo to move to Stardew Valley, which of course I thought this was a great idea. Whilst I was on Ginger Island, I did go ahead and check my perfection progress to see we're at 62%, so very much approaching our 75% target. With that in mind, I went to the mutant and bug lair to catch another new fish, the water grub. Gross. On day 348, I checked the travelling merchant who still didn't have the rare crow I needed, I went up to the mountains to give Leo a gift and passed his lovely new home. I just installed the Look Up Anything mod, and found out that this weird looking thing I'd not caught yet was Dulce Seaweed, and honestly it was the entire reason I installed the mod because I don't think I'd have figured that out myself. I tried to fish for it at the beach, but I didn't have any luck today. On day 349 I harvested all of the crops on my farm, and now I realised that I left them there so that the soil would be ready and watered for the strawberries I was about to buy. 
I did also put down some speed road to get that third strawberry harvest. When I got to the festival, I bought 900 strawberry seeds because I couldn't remember how many I needed. Then it was time for the egg hunt. Except this year, I did one of my worst performances yet. At six eggs, I lost this year to Abigail. It's okay, I lost on purpose. I had to let someone else have a go this time. I just want to plant my strawberries and forget about it. On day 350, I picked my rhubarb and made some into a pie. I checked the merchant who was, once again, absolutely useless, before adding more kegs to my second shed and starting a new batch of wine, making us a decent amount of money today. On day 351, I picked up all the slime from the slime hutch and managed to catch Claire with a gift on her way to work. It was Olivia's birthday, so I gave her one of my gold quality wines, which she loved. I just found out there were new forageables at the summit, which meant I missed out on the winter star rose because I didn't visit the summit once last season. And we need it for a cooking recipe. No! Absolutely gutted. At least the first of my monster crops were ready, the slime berries and the void root, and in their place I planted the ancient fern seeds. On day 352 I got the recipe for mango sticky rice, so now I could take care of the trash bears of crest. But when I went to give it to him, he was asking for something else instead. So I returned with a baked berry oatmeal, and next he wanted some rice pudding. So I went home to make some, and took it over to him. And now he seemed to be satisfied. In return, this area was cleaned up. Look how much better it looks. But also, he brought Dusty a treat which was absolutely adorable. <laughs> then, whilst I was by the sewers, I went to catch the snatcher worm, which looks really nasty. Ew. And because of that, I needed a dose of cute, so I started a puppy fish pond. The amount of time spent harvesting was starting to get to me, considering that I had expanded the farm in various locations, so I put out a poll asking whether or not I should add the harvest with scythe mud, which was met with a resounding yes. So on day 353, I got to test it out on Ginger Island and oh my god it's so satisfying. I forgot about all of my other cauliflower till now, so I scrambled to slap down some speed growth so that I could plant my rhubarb in time for the end of spring. It was evening by the time I finished Aurora Vineyard, so I pickled my cauliflowers and went to bed. On day 354, I found out I could harvest truffles with the scythe, which was fun. I popped to Ginger Island to hand in a couple of monster crops to Lance. After picking up some more speed grow from Sandy, as well as some more rhubarb seeds, I sped off to Grampleton Fields to do the cauliflower rhubarb swap here. I also added a couple more sprinklers because I found them in a the chest and I didn't want them to go to waste. Although I don't know why I placed them like this, it's looking a little bit awkward. On day 355, my first strawberries were ready. I have no idea how I'm going to live without the harvest with Scythe Mod now. I sold the quality ones and kept the rest for the preserves jars. I started chipping away at the crafting so I didn't have to do everything at once. And in doing so, I realised I didn't have enough garlic to craft the oil of garlic. So I brought some more seeds from Pierre and planted them in the spare spots next to the potential large cauliflower. As it was a Friday, I went to check the travelling merchant. Did she have my rag row? No, she did not. I'd run out of coal, so the rest of the evening was spent smacking bouncy mushrooms with some monster musk, because just like the dust sprites, these drop coal too. On day 356, I literally just worked on friendships and got this cutscene with Krobus when I went to see him, and ended up buying some pink cake from him. On day 357, I visited the desert trader to get some staircases, because I wanted to tackle Key's hungry challenge once and for all, which meant I can't eat or drink whilst in our cabins for the day. I had to do it today, even though there was bad luck, because it was literally the final day before the quest was going to expire, so I just staircased the entire way, making it to floor 100 before 10am, and getting another dark cowboy hat. Because of the bad luck day, I did end up going home from here. It was wine day after all, so I had that to deal with, and of course, the traditional fruitless travelling merchant trip. On day 358, I received a mail from Andy asking me to come over, because he wanted to show me something, so I made haste to his farm to find out what it was. He showed me this lovely photo of Aurora Vineyard in its prime. Looks like this is what we have to live up to. I gave him a gift before I left and managed to max out his friendship. I got a cutscene with Harvey about my annual checkup, and thankfully I was healthy. I actually stopped by to buy a couple of things because for some reason I needed to ship a stamina capsule and a sports drink for perfection, and this was the only place I knew I could get a hold of them. I needed a new key quest, so I accepted the extended family one again, and whilst I was there I bought the heavy tapper recipe as well as the aquatic sanctuary, with plans to house these quest fish. On this day, I caught Miss Angler, then spent the rest of the night trying to catch the Legend 2 with no success. On day 359, I harvested my strawberries as well as my garlic at- Oops. Uh.
and what was definitely my first time playing day 359, <clears throat> I harvested my strawberries as well as skillfully harvesting my garlic before pickling some more cauliflower. I cleared out my fruit cave which honestly I'd forgotten about and then headed to the beach where I found a new recipe in Willy's shop. Whilst I was there, I got some trout soup to help me with the key quest I managed to catch the son of crimson fish. Then it was onto the sewers where I successfully caught the radioactive carp, later followed by the glacier fish junior, but the legend 2 was still playing hard to get. So on day 360 I ignored the flower dance and went back to the lake to try again with the seafoam pudding, but I literally didn't even encounter it before the buff ran out. Well actually, I didn't see it at all till 10pm but this fish was having none of it. I passed out by the lake, legendless, so we failed the quest this time. On day 361 I wanted to prep in advance for summer, so I went to Piers to pre-buy the seeds we needed. I followed the same setup as spring, with a sprinkler for each crop I needed for ingredients and the rest to be filled with starfruit seeds. And I actually bought a whole load of them so that I was stocked up, and some deluxe bee grow since I was there. I then went into the casino to buy the Statue of Endless Fortune, finding a suitable spot for it in the house before harvesting my truffles. I got a cutscene where Sandy was visiting town, and we spent the day visiting the sites of Pelican Town with Emily. I very much love this cutscene. On day 362, I had the last of my monster crops to harvest, as well as the next set of starfruit. I pickled some more cauliflower and then bought the deluxe retaining soil recipe on my way to find Lance to hand in those monster crops. When I got home, using my new soil, I decided to plant some tea saplings in my house because I like how they look. Day 363 was the final strawberry harvest of the year, and I also had some rhubarb ready too. After finally getting around to fixing the greenhouse path, I chilled out by foraging for the last time this spring. The next morning, Lance was at my door, here to talk about those monster crops. He let me know that there was a reward chest waiting for me in his house. Once I dealt with my wine day duties, I harvested my rhubarb from Aurora Vineyard, added more casks to the cellar there, and grabbed my remaining crops from the Grampleton fields. It was evening by then, so I wasted no more time and took the boat to the Highlands, where I was met with this cutscene with a dwarf opening a brand new shop. Whoa! Here he sold all these really cool decoratives. But hey, let's be honest, I instantly forgot this existed. With that distraction over with, I opened the chest in Lance's outpost, receiving the Diamond Wand. What the? This wand teleports flying enemies away from you, which was cool, but I probably won't use it much. I went to sleep for the final time this season, making 370,000 gold. When I walked outside on day 365, I realised I forgot to harvest those last cauliflowers that never merged, so that's kind of a rip. Lol, look at me struggle to find the right emote. The rest of this day was your usual busy start of the season, prepping the fields and planting seeds, even managing to get down Grampleton Fields and Aurora Vineyard on this day. My aged wine was finally ready on day 366, so I rearranged my basement casks to fit more of them in because more aged wine means more dollar. I even managed to cram a few more into this room in Grandpa's old shed. All this wine production made me decide we had no more room for the child, so I took a prismatic shard to the witch's hut and turned her into a dove. That night we'd made 1.7 million gold, so on day 367 we were nearly halfway to our golden clock. This day was dedicated to gift giving as we were still quite a way away from full friendship with everyone. And to finish off, I played the crane game till I got the Wumba statue. What a true work of art. Day 368 was Jazz's birthday, so I gave her an Iridium Fairy Rose from Sprite Springs before heading to the secret woods to pick up the new forageables. I got a cutscene with Susan, crafting a dress together. She shared a technique with me that makes casks, kegs and preserve straws cheaper to make. I should have made friends with her sooner really. From there, I climbed to the summit to collect the summer flowers, then spent the rest of the day in the harder mines for radioactive ore and coal. On day 369 I asked Robin to upgrade my second shed because I needed more room for more kecks, and then I fished at the beach, finally getting that dull seaweed, which was weird because it fought like a fish? Absolutely baffling, like why? On day 370 I hung out with some of the townies at the beach resort. I didn't stay long though because I had some starfruit to harvest, except when I got to the farm it wasn't ready yet. It seems I made a bit of a miscalculation, but it was a good thing I came here because we had some weeds to clear. Then it was back to the harder mines once again. On day 371 my radishes were ready, so I swiped them, storing most of them in my fridge so I could cook some new recipes. I hopped over to Ginger Island to collect that star fruit I thought was going to be done yesterday, adding all but the gold ones to my kegs for more wine. My second shed had finished upgrading, so I added more kegs to fill the space. More wine please! 
On day 372, I noticed that my dull seaweed laid eggs. <sighs> oh. This was another day of gifting, but also Gus was finally at Ginger Island, so I could buy these two recipes from him, which I'd been waiting for for a while. Mr. Key was offering the extended family quest again, and this time I was determined to do it. Nothing was going to stop me. Armed with several different bobbers, I headed to the beach first, where I was interrupted by this cutscene from Vincent, and don't worry, I still watched it. And honestly, this ended up being a little bit sad. With that out of the way, I bought a load of trout soup because I didn't have enough stuff for more seafoam pudding. It took me all afternoon to encounter the son of crimson fish this time, then I went up to the lake to attempt the legend 2 again. And actually, this time I got super lucky and got a pretty calm one, meaning I got to catch it on the first day. After harvesting some crops on day 373, I got a cutscene with Martin at the library. Then I went back to making progress with a fishing quest. I caught the radioactive carp, followed by the glacierfish junior, and as you can see, I got the key gems for completing it. So at some point I caught Miss Angler too, but I literally can't find the footage anywhere. But hey, I did it, and that's what matters, right? You know what that means. It means you have to subscribe. Do it. I can wait. On day 374, my starfruit is ready. Thanks to the Harvest with Scythe mod, we managed to get all locations picked and replanted in one day. Selling the gold quality fruit and the truffles that day, along with a few other things, we made over 300,000 gold. Day 375 was the luau, so I yeeted in a magma cap, much to everyone's delight, which helped greatly with our friendship progress. On day 376, I foraged in the secret woods where I found this shrub seed. This was the seed that was going to grow the salal berry I needed. So I sped off to Ginger Island with some hyper speed grow and shoved it in the ground. Whilst I was there, I bought a deconstructor from Mr. Key's shop so that I could get a steady supply of stone from staircases. I finally ran out of wood again, so I had to go chopping. Coming home at the end of the day with just over a stack. On day 377, I made some more rhubarb jelly and brought Alex a birthday breakfast. I got a cutscene with Maru where I had to help her with a load of math, and thankfully I got the questions right without even looking them up. I got another cutscene right after where she electrocuted me, and I'm gonna have to think twice before helping her with math problems again next time. Later that day, I found Sandy wandering around Cintasap. It's so cool to see her this side of town. I then spent the rest of the evening deconstructing staircases and turning wood into coal so that I can make more preserves jars, except I kinda made casks again. Oh, This meant I could only make eight more preserves jars because I ran out of wood. So on day 378, I had to go chop some more until suddenly, I remember that it was wine day, so I had to go sort that out. Spending the rest of the evening in the kitchen, chipping away at the cooking recipes. Day 379 started with yet more cooking, and ended with a cutscene with Lance where we got to assist him with some field research. Actually, I lied. It ended with buying a heck load more starfruit seeds from Sandy, and scoring a D in the Solarian Chronicle scenario. Yikes. On day 380, I harvested a bunch of starfruit and caught a rainbow trout for a recipe. I went home to cook it right away, and caught a void salmon to put in one of the fish ponds, also to use for recipes. On day 381, I gave Sam a cactus fruit for his birthday, which meant we had another friendship completed. I was out of coal again, so I dropped down in the mines with some monster musk for the afternoon, passing out with 143 more coal. The following morning, Sam was at my door inviting me to his concert tonight. I checked in on my very full slime hutch, which I'd clearly forgotten about for a while, although it was super satisfying to clear up. I got around to finishing filling my second shed with kegs, and spent a fun evening in the city at the concert. On day 383, I got a thank you letter from Sam, and a copper bar from Clint in the mail. My second batch of home starfruit was ready, so this day was dedicated to harvesting and replanting this huge amount of crops. On day 384, I tore down the kids' room to make into another wine area, but annoyingly, you can't move the crib. I managed to work around it and place down another 25 kegs. Day 385 was a wine day, and you know how that goes by now. But also, being a new gifting week, I was running around with fun things for the villagers. Although to be fair, I'd actually been doing this quite often. Just, if I showed you every single one of my gifting sprees, this video would be excessively long. But yeah, just know that I'm trying to keep up with it. Oh, and I did also go do a big staircase trade of the desert today. On day 386, I chopped wood again and added more void eggs to Morgan's gifting chest. Back at the farm, I deposited my, like, two stacks of wood, with which I made 15 more jam jars. That shed is getting closer to being finished now. Luckily, the next round of jam was done on day 387, 
so I can fill those new jars too. I then carefully selected some of my worst and cheapest eggs to give to Gus for another one of his famous omelettes, and then spent the afternoon at the mountain lake fishing for chub for Wooly. I finished the quest by 7pm, which meant we were close to filling his friendship. On day 388, I hung out in the volcano for the day, looking for the hot java ring, but my efforts were fruitless. Day 389 was a ginger island starfruit harvest. As we were now closing in on our next 100 days, I went to check on my perfection progress, to find that we officially hit our 75% target already. Oh! This made me wonder how close to true perfection we can get in the remaining time. I wandered over to the Crimson Badlands to see Alessia selling two more elixir recipes, which I'll need for crafting completion, and it's also worth noting that she sells explosive ammo cheaper too. I began day 390 by bringing Lance's favourite dish, which means we're now close to full hearts with him too. I made another batch of jelly as we were still working towards the golden clock, and then visited Krobus with some horseradish. I noticed today that he was now selling a new recipe, so I grabbed that because we're going to need it to become a master chef. So I went home to put a void eel in the pond to breed for ingredients. On day 391, I went on a gifting spree and collected more hay as I was almost out. I wanted to have the farm decorated before day 400, but all I really ended up doing was filling in some parts because I got overwhelmed by the catalogue again. There's just so much here, alright? Way too many decisions. I did manage to do a bit of decorating in the house though, with a new bigger dining table for all of our zero guests. On day 392, Lance was at my door asking me to come to Ginger Island at my earliest convenience, which of course I obliged. He took me to First Slash, which is located on Fable Reef, and immediately I saw that some of the forageables I needed to ship were located here. This place was awesome. I was introduced to some of the guild members, and we showed them the monster crops. But then when the cutscene ended, it took me back to Ginger Island. I tried to go back the way we came, but I couldn't get there. Well, I suppose nothing left to do but go home and grab that last starfruit harvest. To keep the spots watered for tomorrow, I planted coffee beans, since I had so many of them. And then, of course, more wine! Being the last day of summer, I went to the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies to buy the sea and foam pudding and talk to everyone. Then we enjoyed the view as we said goodbye to the season. On day 393, the wizard was knocking to tell me I can now make the warp in his nexus to first slash. But I didn't have time for that because it's the first day of a new season, so I need to pick up some seeds. Oh. Uh... Hurry up, Pierre! I didn't have many ingredients left that I needed to grow, so I bought some amaranth, a load of cranberries, a small amount of other crops, and an entire stack of pumpkins. I planted my ingredients and my cranberries at home. Then the pumpkins filled any gaps as well as the space on Aurora Vineyard and the Grambleton Fields. Day 394 was Penny's birthday, but when I went to the trailer I got a couple of cutscenes. One where Pam yelled at us for cleaning, and one where Penny cooked something kinda questionable. Oh, and also the one where Pam tries the strong stuff. <laughs> With that nonsense out of the way, I gave Penny her birthday diamond, which meant another friendship now complete. I then made haste to the wizards as I was dying to get back to Fable Reef to pick up the new forageables and to try catching that final fish, but then my inventory got full. I went home to empty, then returned to find this bubble spot which I spent the entire afternoon at, till finally. Oh my god. Master Angler. Oh my god. <laughs> that feels amazing. That meant the next morning I woke up with a star drop in the mail. No, not that. Or that. There it is! After giving 30 void essence to my void eel, I set out this random line of kegs for more money, and then spent most of this day working on completing the crafting recipes. I had to get more materials from the Crimson Badlands, so I used this opportunity to test out the haste elixir and the hero elixir, and then went on a bit of a rampage, including taking on the big corrupted serpent again. Then finished the day with some mining in the Highlands cave, except I kinda ended up dying. Luckily, I didn't lose anything. On day 396, I tried to catch Claire on her way to work to say hello, but I accidentally opened the trash can instead. I couldn't even make it up to her with a gift today. Let's pretend that didn't happen, and do something more productive. I was here to buy flower seeds for the tub of flowers recipe, which I went home to craft and set down in my house because it looks pretty. Every Friday and Sunday since the beginning of the year, I'd been checking the travelling cart for that rare crow, and I was always met with disappointment. 
On day 397, she finally had one, so the collection was officially completed. Afterwards, I went back to First Slash to see if there was anything else to do here, where I found this spare room which I now had permission to use. Jolene said that there was something I could do for her, so I dropped everything to go back and talk to her, and she talked about catching a torpedo trout, but there was no quest or anything in my journal, so I said I tried bringing her one, but still nothing. So yeah, I don't know, maybe the quest line hasn't been written yet or something. Moving on, I went to Ginger Island to check on the shrub scene, having to clear out a load of weeds for the new season, but was happy to see the salal berries had grown, although I still didn't have enough for the berry pie. On day 398, I received the recipe for the deluxe scarecrow, so I went to craft it right away. Look at the radius on this thing! I was initially confused because I thought that this was my last crafting recipe for the achievement. I definitely crafted everything I'd already unlocked, so I must be missing something. I went to a couple of shops checking for crafting recipes but found nothing, so I went home to clear out the slime hutch and then to Ginger Island for my next lot of starfruit. I did also go to check on my perfection percentage again, but to my surprise the number had barely moved and apparently had not got all the star drops. I was baffled, I thought I'd done it. Turns out I'd not done the one with old master cannoli, which I could have sworn I'd done already. To add insult to injury, the secret woods had only just been updated to add this damn maze before the statue. I loved the idea at first, until I needed to do it. It ended up taking me a few in-game hours, making it just before 9pm. But hey, we got there, didn't we? Overnight, we got a visit from Angelica the Crop Fairy, but I don't like when I have the same crop done at different times, so on day 399 I ignored that and went to give Morgan a birthday void egg, which meant I got this cutscene doing magic together with them and the wizard. Back at the farm, I had wine day chores to tend to, and a buttload of truffles to sell too. The morning of day 400, Morgan was at my door, telling me about a test they have to take with the wizard today in the forest, and they wanted me to be there for it. The rest of my cranberries were now ready, so I harvested those, then chased Claire down with a sunflower on her way to work. Looking at my friendships now, I was so close to being done. Just a bit for the dwarf and Sandy, then just Martin lags behind. I realised I hadn't checked Robin's shop for crafting recipes recently, and there it was, the last recipe. I didn't have any marble at home, so I had to go to Clint's to open more geodes, and thankfully it didn't take all that many to find it. I sprinted home to craft that brassiere, and at long last, we got the Craftmaster achievement. I didn't forget about Morgan's test, so I went to the forest for moral support, and this cutscene was really quite adorable, but as a result, my farm animals now produce higher quality stuff definitely wish I did this earlier. I popped to Mr Key's walnut room to check the percentage again, and look how close we are. Annoyingly, the last thing we have to ship is a winter forageable, but for today, I did what I could to get as close as possible. I caught the squid using magic bait to cook fried calamari, bought the last cooking recipe from Marlon, cooking that right away, but that was as much as I can do on this day, so I went to bed for the 400th time. So, how do we do with our goals? The next day I went to check the perfection tracker, and we ended on 89%. Of course, we knew I hit 75% on day 389, so I'd call this a major success. How about 5 hearts with all the villagers? Well, we know that my lowest friendship is Martin, and he sits at 6.5 hearts. Another win. My mod challenged me to get to floor 100 of skull caverns with no bombs and stairs, which we completed on day 324. We got all the obelisks and weird statues, and even though it was hard, we managed all the star drops too. That's 6 for 6, the first time this series that I hit all of my goals. Now, you didn't think I was just going to leave it here, did you? We had such a small amount to do for perfection, I decided to just go ahead and do it since we wouldn't get another 100 days of gameplay at this point, so this is not the end. On day 401, I got enough berries to cook the berry pie, then struggled to catch the void eel from the pond. What was I doing? I cooked the Void Delight, which meant our last one was now the flower cookie, which has to wait till winter. Martin was in town, so he got a rabbit's foot. I slept till day 405, when I harvested my cranberries, gave Martin a gift, then went back to bed. Day 406 was a wine day, so I refilled the kegs and shipped the wine before giving a gift to Martin and the dwarf, resulting in another full friendship. I then went home to harvest my pumpkins, not forgetting my other locations too, but I didn't replant them this time. When I went to bed, we made 1.4 million gold, which means on day 407, I could build the golden clock. It was a ginger island starfruit day, so I replanted those in case I wanted them and went to bed. 
days 408 to 420 were a repeat of sleeping till the days Martin comes to town and waiting for him at the bus stop with a rabbit's foot. Finally hitting full friendship on the last day of fall. Another milestone complete. On day 421, I had some hot cocoa with Susan on my way to the summit to pick up those flowers I've been desperately waiting for. I went home to cook that flower cookie, getting the gourmet chef achievement, then shipped one of the flowers and went to bed, getting the full shipment achievement overnight. I rushed right over to Ginger Island to check the perfection tracker, and there it was, 100% perfection. I was so excited that I went back to bed. The next morning, I wasn't sure what to expect. This was my first time ever getting perfection, but the game did end up guiding me. I climbed to the summit to find Victor waiting for me. What a sight to behold. On day 423, we got the perfection cutscene. I couldn't help but feel a little bit emotional. I've poured so much love and time into this farm, and you guys have come along on this journey with me. I've learned so much, both with Stardew and with creating these videos. I'm not sure when the next time I'll revisit this farm will be, but maybe in time when there have been more big updates to Expanded and there's more to explore, maybe then I'll come back? Anyway, if you enjoyed the series, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, thank you so much to my channel members, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!